Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. The hearing of the Committee on Women, Children, Family Relations, and Gender Equality is now called to order. Um, for one, Senator De La Rosa is on his way, and I hope other colleagues as well. But we will begin uh, and uh, continue uh, as they arrive. Dear friends, ngayong araw ay isang makasaysayang araw para sa ating lahat. Sa kauna-unahang pagkakataon, ang Senado ay magsasagawa ng isang hearing upang pag-usapan ang mga panukala na isabatas ang isang divorce law sa ating bansa. Lahat tayo nandito ngayon ay may kalahok at testigo sa paglikha ng kasaysayan. This is history in the making. We are in the process of making history by crafting a policy to make dissolution of marriage available to all Filipinos who want second chances in love to rebuild their families and start all over again. I believe in and support the institution of marriage. I myself was happily married. I have the highest admiration and respect for happy married couples. Ang kasal, bukod po sa pagdiriwang ng pagmamahalan, ay malalim na pagtataya sa tapat na pagsasama. However, I also believe that Filipinos, especially women and their children, should have the right to turn the page and be free from abusive and loveless relationships. Buwang aking simpatya at suporta sa ating mga kababayan, lalo na ang napakaraming kababaihang biktima ng domestic violence at psychological abuse. They together with their children, deserve all the chances available in the world to build nurturing families and find true and meaningful relationships. The Dissolution of Marriage Bill is pro-marriage, pro-family, and pro-children. It makes us respect marriage more by being more discerning with our choices in life. It protects children from abuse and rebuilds broken families. We can actually call it whatever we want. Divorce, dissolution of marriage, o ano paman. Ang mahalaga, pigyan natin ng second chance ang ating mga kababayan. I expect, dear friends, that we will have enriching conversations on the proposed measures. The fact that we will have many advocates here today, both for the bill and against it, as well as the conversations in social media speak to the intensity with which these bills are being debated on and scrutinized. Many points of view are being put forward. In today's hearing, we hope to create a platform for the discussion of these ideas in a sober and rational way. We'll try our best to hear all voices. And as I always like to remind, this committee desires to provide a safe space for everyone. Let's be respectful of our differences. Let's listen to each other. This committee will hear the following measures. Senate Bills Number 67, 288, 356, and 504. Uh, as they arrive, I'll be acknowledging the presence of uh, my colleagues and uh, also give way if any of them wish to make some opening uh, remarks to us. At this point, could I please request uh, the committee secretary to uh, recognize the resource persons already present with us this morning. Good morning, everyone. We would like to acknowledge our resource persons. From the Commission on, Overseas, on Filipino Overseas, we have Ms. Janet Ramos. For the Philippine Statistics Authority, we have Mr. Sir Ryan Anthony Ahmad and Mr. Rodelio De La Fuente. From the Department of Justice, we have Attorney Mary Grace Polido Sadian, State Counsel. and Assistant Secretary Nerisa Carpio.
For the Catholic for Reproductive Health, we have Ms. Luz Frances Chua, Executive Director. For the Socialist Women of the Philippines, we have Ms. Beth Anchoco. We have Mr. Romeo Dongeto, Executive Director, Philippine Legislators Committee on Population and Development and Convener Child Rights Network, together with Ms. Aurora Kilala, Advocacy and Partnership Manager. For the intercessors of the, for the Philippines, we have Pastor Agosto Ko. For the Alliance for Family Foundation, we have Mr. Timothy Laws, Chairman, and Attorney Joel Arzaga, Vice President. For the Psychological Association of the Philippines, we have Attorney Florani Polo Jacob. We also have Ms. Ana Santos, Journalist. For the Department of Social Welfare and Development, we have Under Secretary Luz Bininda Ilagan. We also have Mr. Paul Rojas, Spokesperson and Senate Liaison Officer, Divorce Coalition Filipinas, together with Ms. Len Arcilia, Ms. Maria Stella Sibonga, and Mr. Mark Anthony Luna, Madam Chair. Thank you, Comsec. So, ganito po yung magiging daloy ng ating hearing. Uh, in the spirit of listening to each other, and because it's important to provide human faces to the measures we debate on, I'd like to begin by asking those with personal narratives to share their stories. Given that the issue of the dissolution of marriage is so contentious, uh, I'd like to make this hearing more efficient by next breaking down the discussion into specific points of contention. And uh, I'll call on resource persons relevant for each particular subject matter. We've identified the following points of contention so far. Firstly, whether or not our laws are sufficient enough to protect parties in a difficult, painful, or abusive marriage. Secondly, whether or not legalizing dissolution of marriage will destroy the sanctity of marriage and family. And thirdly, whether or not legalizing the dissolution of marriage will have damaging effects on the children. Uh, and of course, uh, my fellow senators, as they arrive, uh, will be free to introduce any other issues uh, at various points of the hearing. After that second round on the contentious issues, we will have one more round for our government agencies to make their positions known. So to begin with our personal narratives, could I please call on Ms. Stella Sibonga of Divorce Coalition Pilipinas. Good morning po. Ako po si Maria Stella Sibonga. Uh, may share ko lang po tungkol po doon sa pinagdadaanan ko na siguro hindi ko masabi kung ano to nung uh, naikasal po ako na sa 18 years old pa lang po ako nun. First marriage po nun nangyari sa akin. Kasi nabuntis na po ako nun nung gusto akong ipakasal nung mother ko. Kaso lang yung lalaki nagtago na pagkatapos niya akong mabuntis. Ayaw na niya magpakita, ayaw niya yung palagutan yung nangyari sa akin. Sa pilit ng mga magulang ko na may kasal kami, ginanap siya, pati mga kamag-anap ko, tinakot na kung hindi niya ako pananagutan, may, manang, may mangyayari sa kanya. Pero noon, hindi, kinausap ko pa rin yung mama ko na sabi ko, huwag mo na akong ipakasal kasi ayaw nung lalaki. Wala rin patutunguhan tong relasyon na to. Walang maayos na pagsasama. Pero ano sabi ng mama ko? Hindi pwede dahil babae ka. Mas malaking kahihiyan to, to sa atin. Sabi ko, bakit ipipilit na ayaw na ayaw niyo talaga? Maraming mga tao dun sa amin talagang sinabi niya sa harap ng mama ko, kahit kailan, hindi ko pakakasalan yung anak niyo. Dahil hindi ako sigurado kung ako ang tatay ng anak ng pinagbubuntis niya. Kaya yun yung halos ikamatay nun ng mama ko na nagmamakaawa sa kanya na papakasalan ako. Siguro naawa at natakot yung mga magulang yung lalaki. Kinasal kami sa so, pag-aakala kong okay lang lahat. Kahit malaking siyang ko, kinasal kami noon. 
Pero nung kinasal kami, naglalasin siya kasi gusto niyang makasagot dun sa simbahan na hindi siya nahihiya, hindi siya mahihiyang sumagot. Nga, natapos yung kasal namin. Pero walang nangyari kasi yun nga, laging naglalasing. Walang hanap buhay. Lagi kang sisisihin, sasabihin sa'yo, bakit? Pinipilit mo lang naman ako mapakasal sa'yo, di ba? Magtiis ka hanggat gusto mo. Kung ayaw mo, hindi umalis ka. Pero wala pa akong ginawa kasi hindi ako nag eskandalo Sinusulo ko na lang kung ano yung nararamdaman ko, kung ano yung sinasabi niya, pinababayaan ko na lang siya kung anong gawin niya. Hanggang sa dumating na pinanganak ko yung panganay, walang nangyari. Tapos nasundan, ganun pa rin. Lasing, babae, walang trabaho na nga. Kung ano ano pang ginagawa ko, yun yung lagi niyang sinasabi, magtiis ka, magdusa ka, dahil, ka, dahil kagustuhan niyan. Kaya wala akong maisip kasi yung mama ko, biyoda, may mga maliliit pa akong kapatid, wala akong mapuntahan. Tinis ko hanggang sa umawot ng punto, naging tatlo yung anak namin. Pero ganun pa rin yung mga pangyayari. Ang gusto niya, pababayaan ko siya kung anong gusto niya. Hindi siya pwedeng pigilan. Kasi yun nga, pag sinasabi kong ganyan, kailangan mo nang magplano sa buhay para sa mga anak natin. Maawa ka naman. Sabi niya, hindi. Bakit? Magtis ka nga. Yun ang sabi kong gusto mo, lumayas ka. Hindi nga ako sigurado kung mga ano ko yan. Sabi ko mga anak mo yan. Alam mo naman, hindi ako lumalamas ng bahay. Wala nga ako. Halos kaibigan dito lang ako. Ginawa ko lahat. Ako nang trabaho. Tinaguyod ko yung mga anak ko. Pero hindi pa rin sapat sa kanya. Lagi pa rin niya akong sinisisi. Kaya puntong sa gabi, sa mag-asawa, hindi talaga may iiwasan yun. Lagi niya ang tinatanong, sino ba talaga mga ama ng mga anak na yan? Hindi ko na lang sinasagot, dinitibdib ko na lang dahil wala akong pagsasabihan. Hanggang sa puntong, hindi ko na talaga kaya lumaki yung mga anak ko. Hanggang sa lumaki, palala ng palala yung sitwasyon. Hanggang sa isang gabi nga, hindi ko na maano na. Tinanong ko na siya, ano ba talagang plano mo sa buhay? Wala ko na bang iniisip na kahit punti yung pagmamahal, kahit hindi sa akin, sa mga anak mo na lang. Sabi niya, wala kang pag-alam. Anong ginawa niya? Kumuha siya ng itak, pinaghahabas yung buong bahay namin. Inangaw ko yung itak at tinatatakot na pumatawa yung mga anak ko. Nag-aagawang kami. At hindi ko na namalayan kung ano nangyari sa akin. Kasi bigla na lang ako noon to. Nawala na ako ng malay. Kaya yung anak kong panganay, yung panganay kong babae, lalaki kasi yung panganay ko, sabi nung anak ko, Mama, tama na, huwag ka nang umiyak. Pwede na natin iwan yung tatay namin, wala siyang kwenta. Iwan na natin yan, Mama. Sabi ko na, hayaan mo na, patatawarin ko na lang siya para sa inyo, kahit pa paano. Ang gusto ko pa rin may salba, ayokong mawalan kayo ng tatay, gusto ko magsasama pa rin tayo. Pero tama na mama, sabi nung panganay kong babae. Nasa six years old pa lang siya noon, alam na nila yung sitwasyon ni. Pero sa kalaunan, hindi pa rin, pinatawad ko pa rin siya. Ganon pa rin, pambababae, lasenggo, hindi mo siya pwedeng kayo. Hindi mo siya pwedeng pigilan dahil masasaktanan. Pero hindi niya ako sinasaktan na as in sinusunto kasi hindi ako nagsasalita. Dinidibdib ko na lang. Hanggang sa umabot yung puntong nahuli ko siyang may babae. Ako pa yung pinapalayas niya. Sabi niya, lumayas ka dito dahil alam mong hindi ka wang dapat napakasalan ko. Lagi yun, lagi yun, lagi yun sinasabi niya sa akin. Kaya at that time, hindi ko na talaga maiwasan. I commit suicide. Gusto ko nang tapusin yung buhay ko. At hindi ko na alam kung anong gagawin ko. Paano ko malalagin yung mga anak ko? Kung ako lang mag-isa, wala kang malalapitan. Nung punta po ako ng dagat, gusto ko dun magpakalunod na lang. Buti may nakakita po sa akin na ihaon po ako nila. Pero hindi pa rin sabi ko, kailangan ko na talaga tapusin ito. Kawawa yung mga anak ko. Ganito na lang lagi nakikita nila. Ginawa ko na naman ulit yung pagbibigte. Diligtas pa rin nila ako. Kaya yun nung nag-decide na ako na siguro ito na yung pangalawang pagkakataon na binigay ni God sa akin na hindi ako mawawala sa mga anak ko. Nung sino mag-aalaga sa kanila. <laughs> yun yun lang ako. <laughs> Pero hindi pa rin po kasi naulit na naman yung 
Yun na nga yung paglasi siya, hindi siya pwedeng pigilan. Ahayaan na lang siya. Anong ginawa niya? Kumuha na naman siya ng malaking itak. Nagahabal. Nagpapadede ako noon ng bunso ko. Diyos, tumakbo po ako nung nagtago po ako. Yung mga anak ko tulog. Nagtago ako, hindi iwala kung saan ako napunta. Nayaan bumalik ako nung tulog na siya. Kasi kung hindi po ako magtatago, baka matatama. Nagpapadede ako nung nung anak ko sa duyan. Tumakbo ako, daladala yung sanggol ng ating gabi. Kahit sino din sa amin, walang nakakalam na ganun yung ginawa ng asawa ko kasi ayoko mapapahiya, ayoko pag-uusapan ako ng barangay namin na ganun ang nangyari. Wala bang tumulong sa inyo, Miss Stella, sa barangay? Nung ilang beses nangyari yung paghabol sa inyo ng itak ng asawa niyo? Dalawa beses pa, ako po, yung, ako po yung umiwas. Wala pong nagsabi na, uh, wala pa akong pinagsasabihan na ganun ang nangyari kasi alam na alam po ng buong barangay namin kung ano ang dahilan ng pagsasama namin, na ako ang dahilan, na pinipilit lang siya. Kaya ayaw, kahit na sa maraming tao, paglasing pinupuntahan ko, pinapaw, yung sasabihin niya, umuwi kang babae ka, animal ka, nyawa ka, sasabihin niya ganun, pinilit niyo lang ako, pinilit niyo lang, yun lang yung lagi niya yung sinasabi sa akin. Kaya hindi po, hindi ko na po alam kung anong gagawin nun. Pinundin, pinagpapatuloy ko pa rin po yung buhay namin, kahit na ayaw na ng mga anak ko. Salamat, Ms. Stella, sa pagkwento. Kahit napakasakit, ikwento ulit. Ano po? Uh, could I ask uh, a resource person from the Psychological Association of the Philippines, si uh, Attorney Jacob, ano po yung uh, pag-aaral ng PAP sa ganitong mga buhay tulad nung kay Ms. Sibonga? No? Ano yung epekto nito sa babaeng asawa? Anong epekto din sa mga anak? Yung katulad ng ikwento nila, no, yung paulit-ulit na pagpapabaya, na pag-aabuso, umaabot sa ilang beses ng karahasan, to the point na yung mismong mental health na nung babae ay naapektuhan. And she is driven by desperation dun sa extreme measures. Ano po yung uh, sa PAP, uh, Attorney Jacob? Well, I think, it, uh, well, let me greet uh, the Honorable Secretary and uh, the rest of the other resource persons. Um, I think it is obvious from the behavior and the n narration of our resource person that uh, she has undergone terrible pain, terrible pain in the relationship of her uh, with her husband. And uh, the pain also that extends to her feeling of inadequacy in protecting and defending her children from the harshness and and um, uncaring and kind behavior of the husband so definitely uh, it is obvious i think to all of us that uh, it is not only the the spouse who is abused who who is emotionally scarred by this experience but also the children, can you imagine what these children will grow up to be? Their idea of a relationship in marriage will, will uh, be their experience of the marriage of their parents. And what kind of parents will they be in their adulthood? What model? will they have of how to behave in a marriage, which is supposed to be a loving and caring relationship between partners. Now, in the case of our um, resource person, it seems that she has succumbed to what we call the battered woman syndrome. She has been unable to extricate herself from this abusive relationship. Uh, another individual may have been able to extricate herself, but um, possibly because of financial uh, issues and possibly because of a lack of self-esteem and continued uh, depreciation of herself by her spouse, supposedly a loving partner, um, then she finds herself unable to unable to rise up and uh, uh, defend herself. So 
um, allowing for dissolution of such a relationship could be a relief. But let us not be misled into thinking that divorce is a solution to a problem like that. It may be one way. It may be an option to get oneself out of that situation. But you can see that there, there are a lot of other um, uh, requirements for one to be able to pick oneself up from such a relationship. So what if there is a divorce bill? So what if they are uh, separated? Um, who will, who will uh, um, assist this family financially, emotionally, spiritually, who I think the state should look into these matters. And if the good senator will allow me, I'd like to read my, I'd like to read my um, supposedly three minute uh, um, sharing for this particular session, or maybe later. It, it depends on the honorable uh, chairman. Thank you, Attorney Jacob. Actually, I haven't set any uh, time limits, just uh, relying on everybody's good sense that we go straight to the point and, and be brief. But I'll be very glad for all of us to hear uh, your uh, statement in a while. But thank you so much initially dun po sa mga observasyon nyo sa, sa sitwasyon at sa kwento ni Ms. Sibonga. Sabi nyo nga po, there may be different options. Nabanggit nyo nga, so what if they are separated? So what if eventually there is a dissolution of marriage law? So mabalik po sa inyo, Ms. Stella, hindi ba kayo nag-file halimbawa para sa annulment? Gayong, ganun sa kwento nung paano kayo nagpakasal, uh, ay posibleng isa yun sa mga option na naiisip din ni Attorney uh, Jacob kanina. Uh, Madam Senator, nag-file po ako ng annulment okay. na Kasi bago pa po yun nangyari, nag-work muna ako dito sa Maynila para kahit pa paano. Kasi mahirap talaga buhay sa probinsya eh. Para may taguyod po yung mga anak ko, mapadalhan ko na, ma makapag-aaral sila ng maayos. Pero sa sitwasyon, lagi sila yung minamaltrato nga. Hindi naman sa sinasaktan lagi. Inaano lang yung tatay nila, pinapalaya sila. Sinasabihan sila, hindi sila mga anak. Tapos yung bahay na tinitirahan nila, sinira pa. Giniba ng tatay nila, pinalaya sila. But that time, pinatawad ko pa rin siya. Gusto ko nga sana siyang idemanda nun pahuli sa mga pulis. Pero anong sinabi nung mga anak ko, mama, wag na, maawa ka na lang kasi kahit pa paano, tatay pa rin namin yan. Yung mga anak ko mahal siya, pero yung, yung tatay nila hindi siya mahal. Hindi sila minahal. Tapos nung kalaunan, pinaayos ko yung bahay namin, kahit pa paano, makatira sila. Pero ginawa na naman niya ulit eh. Sinira niya, pinalayas na naman niya ulit kung saan saan nakikitira yung mama ko. Mama ko kasi nag-aalaga eh. Tsaka yung mga anak ko. Eh, kaya nakapag-decide na ako na wala na talaga. Kailangan ko nang tapusin itong pagsasama namin. Na mas lalong masasaktan kasi yung mga anak ko nag-ano na talaga. Mama, tama na. Huwag ka nang masaktan. Kailangan na natin iwan yan. Kaya nakapag-decide po ako na nakapag-ano ako ng pera. 2011. Kasi 2005 noon, naghiwalay na kami 2006. 2011, nag-file ako ng annulment. Ang masakit nito, akala ko may file ng lawyer ko eh, kasi anal yung lawyer na kinuha ko doon sa Surigao del Sur po, taga Surigao po ako. Nung binalikan ko doon sa korte, sabi ng korte, walang na-file na anal men. Yun ang masakit eh, di pinuntahan ko yung lawyer ko, sabi ko, attorney, anong nangyari, bakit wala pa yung anal men ko hindi na-file? Sabi ng lawyer ko, Ano po, kasi ma'am, wala pa po, walang judge, hindi daw pwede mag-file ng annulment kung walang judge. Walang judge na naka-assign doon. Nung naka na, 2012 na i-file na. Yun na, nagkaroon ng hearing, laging na po postpone. Minsan nga ako na nagpapa-remind sa kanila kasi hindi nga nila inaasi kasi parang ako na yung naging abogado doon sa sarili kong kaso. Attorney, kailangan may hearing ngayon. Sabi, ay wala, hindi po, attorney, meron talaga akong hearing ngayon. Kasi every hearing, kahit na pupustun, wala akong namimiss na mga hearing. Nandun talaga ako lagi. Sige, kung sino-sinong abogado na lang kinupoint out niya na maka-attend. Tapos pagdating doon sa korte, sasabihin lang, wala po akong masabi sa, sa case na to kasi uh, pinapapunta lang ako. Hindi ko nabasa yung ano, kung anong laman ng annulment case niya. Paano po, po finally na-desisyonan yung 
uh, annulment case nyo? Uh, umabot po yun ng, umabot po ng mahigit dalawang taon, lumabas yung decision. Ay, hindi pala, sorry. Luma, uh, nag, umabot yung hearing na hanggang mahigit dalawang taon. Tapos, nung na, na decisionan lumabas yung decision, mahigit dalawang taon, umabot ng limang taon bago na decisionan nag-grant po. Eh, tuwanto ako kasi nag-grant eh. Nung pumunta po ako sa, sa korte, ako na nag-asikaso kasi hindi ko na pwedeng masikaso yung sa, sa lawyer ko eh. Nakadalawang lawyer ako. Yung unang lawyer, iniwan ko na. Yung laging nag-aasikaso, yun yung sabi niya. Ako na lang kunin ng lawyer para may pagpapatuloy ko yung case mo. Kasi pag hindi mo ako kukunin, talagang walang mangyayari sa case mo. Pero kung nag-grant na po yung annulment, na so po. ano na pong sitwasyon nyo ngayon? Wala po po. Nung nag-grant na po, nabigyan ako ng certificate of finality. Kasi humingi ako doon sabi nila, 15 working days na ba? Sabi ko ma, magto two months na mula nung lumabas yung desisyon. Ayo, sige, pwede ka na namin bigyan, okay na. Tapos nun nga, ang sakit dito, pagbalik ko, sasabihin nilang, ma'am, Sorry, hindi ka namin mabigyan ng certified copy para may parehistro mo sa LCR. Nag-motion po yung soldier. Ano yung sabi Motion po? na? Uh, motion for reconsider reconsideration po. Nag so, yun yung isang importanteng provision din na kailangan nating tignan sa iba't ibang options. So, may papel talaga dito ang soldier no, sa annulment. Matatanong din natin sa government agencies mamaya lalo na sa DOJ yung ano yung remedies sa ganitong sitwasyon. Salamat po, Ms. Stella. Um, now I'd like to call on Marco Antonio Luna to also share uh, your narrative. Uh, my name is Marcos Antonio Luna. I'm a former OFW seaman. And got, I got married in 1993. And then, got married as a church, church uh, marriage. It was in 1994. And then, when I came home, I, every year I go to outside of the country, you know, uh, every year. And then in 1999, when I went home, bigla na lang naging aloof yung wife ko. So, siyempre, kung ano yung iniwan ko noong 1998, I was expecting na ganun din ang kanyang warmth, di ba? So, I was so devastated. I even... I even went to a doctor, my cardiologist, because I, I was beginning to have a high blood pressure at that time. And I was only 33. Uh, even my doctor prescribed me a uh, somewhat a frisium. It is a medicine for to calm you down because I cannot sleep. And so, so I met a family, a very good family, who encouraged me to pray. I prayed. I, she, he even uh, encouraged me to go to, to the Redemptorist Church in Baclaran for a counseling because they have free counseling there. The only, the only church I know in whole of Metro Manila that have free counseling from Monday to Saturday, 9 to 5 p.m. So I went there every day, sometimes every day, sometimes every Wednesday, and even on Saturdays they have lawyers who are assigned there. So... Nothing happened. I went, I went back to the ship after a year when you know, I, I was able to go to an agency who accepted me despite of my medical condition. So I just signed a waiver. So I went out and then I stayed in the ship for two years. Two long years. And then when I was in the ship, I was in the ship. And then I was in the ship. And then, na, na, bumalik siya sa akin. So, tinanggap ko. Kasi, wala naman akong ano eh. Wala, I don't have any girlfriends. I stay in the ship for two years. So, I continued praying. So, yun nga, yun ang nag result So, maybe I was so happy. Nagkar nagkaroon kami ng reconciliation. And then, for the next, uh, and then, in 2009, she asked me, I, I was continuing going to the ship, no? providing well with them, for them, with my son and my wife. So in 2009, she asked me, can I go to Saudi Arabia? Because I was being offered a job there. Uh, okay. Anyway, I trust you. So she went there. And then, and then when she went back in 2011, I received the first email 
since that was the only time we had an internet in the ship. The first email I received from her is an email for a separation. It was a bullet point email stating all her reasons why. So I, I cannot do anything because I was in the ship. I was there. She, she only informed me, but she did not try even to get my side of the story. So I was so devastated. So I continue, of course, do, uh, sa, ano, sa mga agency kasi, we are, we are bounded by law to give 80% of our salary. No? 80% of our salary. Gusto kong tinawagan ko yung ano, agency namin, pwede ko bang putulin yung allotment? Kung pwede. Kasi sabi niya, this is different. Eh. Sabi, mismo siya na mismo nagsabi. This is different. So, sabi ko, gusto ko namang ma-preserve yung pinaghihirapan ko sa barko. Because, can anyone here, can anyone here tell and uh, know how it feels to work in the middle of nowhere, give what you have earned to someone who is disrespecting you? I don't think none of you ever experienced that. None of you. So when I went back in November of the same year, Ganun siya. Nakikipag-chat sa mga foreigner. I never even touched a hair on her. Pinabayaan ko lang. Because as advised to me by, the, by a good family, pray. So I went back to McLaren Church. I went back there. I had this uh, counselor named Sister, uh, we call her Sister, but she's not a nun. Uh, Sister Chinitz, no? So, when I, during how many sessions I was there, she asked me, can we, get, can we have a history of background sa family niya? So, yun, sinabi, sinab, tinanong niya ako, ano ba father niya? Well, he's a bum. He's a Spanish bum. Huh? And the mother is the breadwinner. Panganay na anak, hiwalay. Pangalawa, hiwalay. Pangatlo, hiwalay. Siya, bunsong babae, Yun nga, naki trying to destroy the marriage. So, sabi niya, you're in a difficult situation eh. Ikaw, ang dami mong pwedeng gawing example eh. You came from a good family. Your father is a businessman. Your mother is a very strict disciplinarian. All your brothers, we are seven brothers, and none of us, uh, six of them, uh, five of them, are not even separated. We did not even go through this difficulty I went through. So, Sabi ko, so I continue doing that, you know. I continue, pray, I continue praying. I con even continued, and this family even, kinukop na kami just to save the, the family. Because he's a pro-life, eh. He's a, this, this family supports the pro-life, eh. Even during the RH bill, you know. So, uh, so I, I heed their advices. Yeah, I even went back, I even went to the extreme of maybe, maybe a new environment with, you know, a change the situation. So, tumira kami sa Baguio. Tinira ko ng Baguio yan. Pero despite that, wala eh. We, we live in two separate rooms. I'm paying everything, but the disrespect is there. So, I gave up. So, I have to give up. Hindi biro yun eh. Hindi biro yung yung ganun na sitwasyon na you did everything I can. So that's why I have no guilt. If ever I will have someone new in my life, I have no guilt. Because it did for me, I did everything I can to save the marriage. At saka isa pa, when I went to a lawyer, to a lawyer, no? ang sinisingil ako ng 200,000. 200,000. You went to the lawyer for what purpose? Uh, for advice. Uh, how much? 200,000 ang advice. Yeah. To oh. just, no, no, no. The, to file for annulment. For annulment. 200,000. The succeeding hearings would be different payments. No? So sabi ko, I cannot afford that. I have a son to support. And of course, by law again, under POEA rules, this wife of mine will have to take 80% of my salary. Call, but... Uh, Sadly, this agency that I was in requires me to, to give 100% of my basic salary. So, 
Ang hirap eh. And then later on, ang later on, I was trying to get back to the to the memories, the sad memories I had. You know? I later discovered that, you know, infidelity, domestic violence, and all sorts of this bad things happening in a marriage is a form of injustice. Eh? Now what we are we are seeking for justice. We are seeking for justice not in a quick way, because the bills that we have right now are have grounds, but in a more realistic way. Because annulment is what? My stepfather, who happens to be a lawyer and a former judge of Lucena City, uh, told me, annulment is so difficult. He, uh, that is, that is, habang buhay pa ako, file it na, noong 1999 pa lang. He was encouraging me, no, I don't want my family broken. So if ever any anti-divorce advocates would tell us that we are anti-family, no, we are not. We are in a stages, stages that we go through. We are victims. We go through the process of trying to fix the marriage, despite the fact that we know that this is an injustice that is, that, uh, that is being done to us. And annulment is very unrealistic. Eh? Why go through that? Why go through that before the marriage? Nag-inala ko yan eh. Minahal ko. So hindi nyo na rin pinahalala ang annulment process nyo? Mm -hmm. You didn't pursue what I you were exploiting I didn't pursue it because I don't believe in it. I don't believe in it. It is being exploited eh. I don't know. I do, I don't, uh, maybe that's my opinion, but that is being uh, exploited. Even one of the milking cows of lawyers. Thank you, Sir Mark. Okay. And uh, we'll also return to some of those points later with uh, Ms. Anna, who's done, uh, Ms. Anna Santos, one of our resource persons who's done uh, extensive research uh, tungkol sa annulment process uh, dito sa Pilipinas. Binanggit din yun ni Ms. Stella kanina. Uh, Ms. Anna, do you want to make uh, any comment at this point in time before I call our last uh, person who will share her personal narrative? So, Ms. Anna Santos, po. please. Good morning to everyone. The ban on divorce has not ensured the happy even after fairy tale that we all want for ourselves. Rather, it has spawned a legion of scammers and con artists who prey on the desperation of the heartbroken. And those people like Mark and like Miss Stella who simply want to move on from their move on with their lives. In the investigative report that we did for Rappler, we found that there are various kinds of scams. There are fake lawyers, okay, people who present themselves as lawyers who run away with your money after you present them with some money for a consultation. Some legal lawyers do the same. There are annulment mills. These are courts that manufacture annulment proceedings and annulment decisions in wholesale quantities. They simply copy paste the different types of uh, the different scenarios under which marriages break down, and they just change the names of the couple involved. Kina copy paste lam po. Minsan daw po kinukuha pa nila sa teleserye yung scenarios. There are they template pa silang form. They just fill in the blanks. They just fill in the blanks. There are municipal officers and local government officials who promise, these are the ones in the city hall, these are the ones in the registrar's office, they promise that they know someone on the inside and they act as fixers if you pay them a certain fee. There are also, and of course there's also recto, the default, no, where you can buy all sorts of uh, annulment decisions. I, when I did this investigative report, I tested out that theory myself. I was able to purchase for 500 pesos an annulment decision saying that I was once married to Bradley Cooper. You might Congrats. give some people ideas. Pero nakakalungkot, no? So yung reto, hindi lang fake diplomas, pati fake annulment yes. decisions. Yes, very. And then I brought that that uh, an, that uh, annulment uh, decision, the uh, annotated marriage certificate that I bought in recto to PSA, and they immediately saw that it was fake. So for those listening out there, you give I have ideas. <laughs> it's just for you to show that you were once married to Bradley Cooper. But other than that, it won't get you anywhere. 
there is, it's clear, there's a complex web of corruption, forgery, and duplicity surrounding this divorce ban. And it just compounds the pain and the anguish of those who are heartbroken and just want to legally sever their marriage. I know, okay, I also went through an annulment. And currently, the annulment proceedings, the way that they are framed right now, it's torturously inhumane. It not only takes such a long time, it not only bleeds you of your money, but it pits the couple against each other. These are two people who were once married, who once believed that they could be in love, and they were in love. This is a couple who built their hopes around each other and started a family together. But for one reason or another, that didn't lead to a happy even after. And they just want a way out of the marriage that is humane and that respects the union that they once had and that spares the feelings of their children. Legalizing divorce is not only a humane thing to do. Given what we have just presented, at the web of corruption, legalizing divorce will also make for good governance. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Anna. Uh, I think we'll return to several of your points uh, during the hearing. But at this point, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the presence of Senator Duroy de la Rosa. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. for coming to our hearing. At yung presencia mo rin, uh, uh, gives us the, the quorum. <laughs> For, for today's hearing. So, salamat kaayo. I'd also like to acknowledge the arrival of some more resource persons. Uh, Attorney Elmar De Jaresco of the Commission on Filipinos Overseas. Attorney Aldwin Salumbides of the Coalition of Concerned Families of the Philippines. Ms. Kana Takahashi, uh, Chairperson of uh, Maya, the Feminist Collective. And Ms. Fanny Tatad of the CBCP Family and Life Office, thank you uh, all and again for coming to the hearing. So to, we'll hear now our uh, third uh, and last personal narrative for this morning from Ms. Len. Uh, preferred po ni Ms. Len, hindi ko na lang bagitin yung apelyido niya, but Ms. Len, uh, please yung kwento po ninyo, bahagi na lang po sa amin. Good morning po sa inyo lahat. Ako uh, po si Len. Ang story ko po is 1998 uh, po, uh, kinasal po ako sa asawa ko at nagkaroon kami ng dalawang anak. But noong 2002, nag-start na siya mag mababae. Okay naman sa akin, tinanggap ko naman. Huli siya ng tawa dahil mahal daw yung pamilya niya. Pero after na, naging bangungot na, yung mga anak ko, lalo na yung eldest ko, lagi na sinasaktan, sinasakal niya, pinipingot niya, <laughs> sinisikmuraan niya. Tapos ako, tinututukan niya ako ng kutsin niyo. Pero tinatanggap ko lahat ng... Ang ginagawa niya kasi mahal ko yung pamilya ko. Gusto ko ka rin daw. Yung mga pekas at mga yung anak ko na iwan lahat. Akala ko nagbago siya. Ba 2010? Ang sabi niya sa akin, mag-stay in daw siya sa work. Yung pala, nakikipaglipin na pala siya. Siyempre, lagi kami nag-aaway. Nananakit siya, sinasakal niya ako. Yari times na lahat ginawa ako, kahit four times, even day off niya, four times the sex, pinagbibigyan ko siya. Pero, ginawa niya, pinilip pa rin yung sumama sa kabit niya, iniwanan niya kami. Sabi ko sa kanya, kung may kabit ka, apat, limang araw ka sa kabit mo, dalawang araw ka sa amin, para hindi lang kami makita ng mga ano kong hiwalay. Sabi niya, buhay daw niya yung desisyon daw niya, yung magkawin daw siya pa kaya kaya naman. Gawin ko daw yung gusto ko, buhayin ko yung mga anak ko, basta siya gagawin niya yung gusto niya. 
Masakit kasi halos buong buhay ko inalay ko sa kanya. Lahat ng, lahat ng hirap pinitiis ko kahit minsan napapahiya ako sa mga tao. Kahit minsan minumura niya ako sa harapan ng mga kapatid ko. Halos yung araw wala akong pahinga o akong hanap buhay. Pag wala siyang pera, ako pa nagbibigay sa kanya kahit nagtatrabaho ko. Pero iniwan pa rin niya kami. Tapos sa mga panahon na nangangapit na siya, sabi niya, kung gusto ko daw matikman yung, yung titi niya, magtrabaho daw ako. Kung hindi, hindi ko daw siya matitikman. <laughs> sabi ko, gagawin ko lahat. Huwag lang tayong masira. Katanggapin ko yung kabit mo. Pero inuman pa rin niya kami. Mga anak ko, nahawa ko, hindi sila kumakain dahil lahat kinuha niya sa akin. Yung, mga, yung anak ko pang hanay, nagkakarga doon sa palengke. Para lang may pamili kami pagkain, ipambaon siya. Pero ang ginawa ko, sabi ko, ayoko makita yung mga anak kong ganito. Kaya ang ginawa ko, nagtrabaho ako. Pinasok ako ng pinsang ko, liaison officer. Limang araw ako sa office. Yung Sabado ko, katulong ako sa amo ko. Tinis ko lahat yun para sa mga anak ko. Dahil hindi siya nagsusuporta. Nung unang mga buwan na nagsuporta siya, sabi niya, kuya na raw namin yung limos namin. Kasi mga pulubi daw kami, hindi raw ako marunong tumayo sa sarili kong paa. Ang sakit-sakit kasi... Nakita ko yung mga anak ko kung paano hindi kumain. Pero sabi ko sa sarili ko, kaya ko to. Kakayunin ko to para sa mga anak ko. At nagpapasalamat ako kahit pa paano naging matatag ako sa dami ng pagsumbok namin mag-ina. Kahit hirap na hirap ako. Ako lang lahat. Pwede na lang may mga taong nag-offer sa anak ko na maging scholar. Nakatapos siya ng pag-aaral. Pero sabi ko sa mga anak ko, alam niyo na, kahit gano'n kasama ang papa niyo, huwag ko sasamaan doon sa papa niyo, kasi kahit anong mangyari, papa niyo yun, ako lang ang dapat magtanim na sama ng loob sa kanya. Pero siyempre, yung mga anak ko, lumalaki sila. Nakita nila yung sitwasyon ko. Ang sabi nila, ma, wala siyang kwenta. Hindi, kung pwede lang, hindi namin siya maging papa. Gusto namin, hindi na lang namin siya maging papa. Natanggap ko na, natanggap ko na nagkaroon siya ng kabit. Umiwan niya kami, inabandunan niya kami. Pero sa tabing naaalala ko na nagutom ang mga anak ko at nakikita ko yung mga peklat sa mukha ng anak ko, <laughs> hindi ko siya kaya patawarin. Sakit, sakit. <laughs> Kaya pinipilit kong tumayo dahil lang sa mga anak ko. Dahil ayokong naisip nila na bumigay din ako. Buti na lang yung mga anak ko. Naging, lumaki silang maging mabuting tao. At hindi sila nagpabaya sa pag-aaral nila. Natawa ng Diyos. Dahil sa pagsisikap ko at sa pagsisikap ng mga anak ko. Nakatapos ang anak ko ng college. Nagpapasalamat ako kahit pa paano. Ngayon nagtatrabaho na siya. Ilang years na rin, almost nine years na kami hindi nakikita ng papa niya. Pero noong 2015, nakita kami kasi nagpasiay siya sa bahay namin sa isang lending company. Hindi ko in-expect yun na namungutan siya sa lending company. Nakapangalan yung application form sa kanya at sa kabit niya. At ginawa akong co-baker. Sabi ko, sir, hindi po yan nakatira dito, sir. Matagal na po niya kaming iliwanas. Sabi nung nagsi-CI, so ma'am, ibig sabihin, decline na to. Sabi ko, natural po, hindi naman po yan nakatira dito. Ako po yung pagbabayarin nyo. Ang ginawa ko po, pinaserox ko po yung certification niya doon sa trabaho. Sinugod ko po siya doon. Sabi ko sa kanya, hindi ko alam kung saan humihirap ng kapal ng muka. Ginawa mo pa akong co-maker. Hindi ka na nga tumutulong sa amin. Ang sabi niya, tutulong daw siya. Ang tawag po dyan, Miss Len, di ba? Adding insult to injury. Ikaw na nga yung nasaktan, may iinsultuhin ka pa. Yun nga po, mami. Tapos, sabi niya, huwag daw ako mag-alala, tutulong siya. 
Pero 2019 na po, ni Pisa po, wala po siyang naitulong sa amin mag-iina. Saksi po dyan ang itaas sa lahat ng mga ginawa niya sa amin. Maraming salamat, uh, Miss Len, at muli kay Miss Stella at kay Sir Mark. Sorry talaga na kailangan nyo pang ikwento ulit sa aming lahat. I can imagine kung ganong kasakit, ano, maalala ulit at ikwento pa sa amin. Pero at least po, mas nabigyan nyo ng mukha talaga, pangalan, buhay, yung pag-uusapan natin ngayon ng mga issue, iba't ibang tema na hinaharap ng mga bills na ito. So, muli po maraming salamat sa inyo. So, yes, now let's go dun sa diskusyon natin itong iba't ibang mga issue at tema, uh, a number of which sinurface na itong mga personal uh, narratives natin. Unahin na po natin yung uh, sanctity of the family. So, uh, frequent argument that we hear is that the dissolution of marriage would destroy the sanctity of the family. So, at this point, uh, I'd like to call on uh, our resource persons here on my right side. Uh, Ms. Fenny, if you wouldn't mind, uh, could I please call you first uh, for your comments uh, on uh, any or all of the bills that we are hearing uh, on the issue of the sanctity of the family and other issues that you may wish to raise. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Senator Riza and Senator De La Rosa. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> yes, so I'm I'm <laughs> I'm stating the position of the CBCP. So before the Senate today are divorce bills, which the authors apparently consider to be of utmost value to the nation, particularly to the present generation and future generations of Filipinos. It seeks to remedy what to them appears to be an almost unspeakable defect. The fact that the Philippines remains the only country in the world without a divorce law and insists on upholding the sanctity and indissolubility of marriage. We believe this is a misplaced concern and the Philippines has a lot to teach and the rest of the world has much to learn from the Philippines in defending the sanctity and indissolubility of marriage. In almost every country where divorce has been legalized, marriage and the family are in serious trouble. This is the naked fact, not merely a moral claim or an opinion. Divorce has not been a solution to the problem. It has become the problem. Let us take one country which is known to us all, the United States. In 1930, out of 1,127,000 marriages recorded, 196,000 or 17% ended in divorce. In 1960, out of 2,126,000 marriages, 1,026,000 or nearly 50% ended in divorce. And in 1990, a report says 3 out of every 5 marriages ended in divorce. The social data reveals that more than one half of adolescents with serious problems are from divorced parents. The highest rate of teenage suicides is from children of divorced parents. High dropouts and underperformance in school also come from the same children. Extreme poverty is common among divorced mothers who end up as single parents Alcoholism, drug addiction, hooliganism, thefts, robberies, and even murders are more common among those coming from divorced parents. Marriage is a human institution rather than the creation of any legislature and should therefore be protected from any undue state interference. Agnostics and atheists may not be prepared to consider divine origin of marriage, but they cannot deny that this is a human institution. Indeed, the first of human institutions which precede the state or our modern idea of government. It is on the bedrock of marriage that the family, which is the basic cell of society, is founded. In the popular handbook, What is Marriage? Sheriff Georges Ryan Anderson and Robert George All Princeton scholars point out that the state is merely a supporting actor in the work of the family and marriage rather than a protagonist. The state exists to create the conditions under which we and our freely formed communities can thrive. The most important free community on which all others depend is marriage, 
and the conditions for its thriving include both the accommodations for couples and the pressures on them to stay together that marriage law provides. Divorce is hand hardly one of those aids to a happy family. What God has joined together, let no man as separate, is an airtight moral prescript which no legislature can repeal or set aside. The legal positivist may legislate divorce, but as far as the objective moral law is concerned, it is an unjust law which cannot bind anyone in conscience. But without having to bother our legislators about the moral law, all we have to do is go to the Constitution, which is the mother of all legislations. Section 2 of Article 15 defines marriage as an inviolable social institution, which means it can be violated by the enemies of the state, least of all by the state itself. It is the foundation of the family, which is the foundation of the nation, and shall be protected by the state. From our clear understanding of what the Constitution says, we should be discussing various ways and means of strengthening marriage and family life rather than spending precious time and money on unconstitutional divorce bills. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Ms. Fanny. Of course, uh, both authors, kami po ni Senator Pia Cayetano, uh, who filed the four divorce bills, have done so in the knowledge that we are founding on constitutional principles. So let's continue talking about uh, those issues uh, during this hearing. Uh, and later also, I'll call Ms. Kana to shed uh, further light your own experiences and insights uh, related to the uh, narrative Nina Mistella about the experiences of the children, and maybe also in reflecting on uh, the data that uh, Ms. Fanny has shared with us about the effects uh, of divorce upon the children. So, but first, uh, I'd like to call uh, to speak also from the uh, intercessors for the Philippines, Pastor Augusto Co. Uh, Senator Antiveros and Senator De La Rosa, magandang hap uh, umaga po. I am representing Bishop Lambalais of Intercessors for the Philippines at the same time uh, uh, representing Pangasinan, IFP. Uh, Narinig ko po kanina yung uh, senior po ni Estela, Mark Sakalin. Uh, I can truly sympathize with them. Uh, I have gone through it. Eh. Uh, I was a kid, battered child at age six. I started working at age six. So, pinupupo ako ng baril o kaya sinasaktan ako ng mga kutsilyo, martilyo. So, hanggang sa lumaki ako na ang galing talaga sa broken home family. So, out of 10 marriages, wala ang broken home family. Infidelity is one uh, of the reasons. So, parang takot na rin ako mag-asawa. But, uh, naranasan ko magutom. Naglalakad sa kalye na walang laman ng tiyan. Eventually, nakapag-aral ako, I became a pastor. Then, the Lord told me to get married. Ang sabi niya sa akin, uh, sabi niya, I will fix your marriage. Sabi niya ganun, uh, I will give you another uh, uh, story in terms of marriage. So eventually, nag-asawa po ako. Up to now, kasal pa po naman kami. So ang sa akin lang po, uh, uh, pwede kong isay po ito. One's trauma or sad experiences should not break the rule of law. One or few or even majority should not be a valid crown again to break the law. Law knows no one, either it makes you or break you. So to change a fundamental law, which is a constitutional law, much more if it is a moral and spiritual law. 
for the marginalized and few is a violation sa ikakabuti ng lahat according sa preamble. Kasi lahat eh, not among the few. So kahit po galing po ako sa broken marriage, ayaw ko po yung batas ng divorce. Although in, in the Bible, pwede naman. Pwede po naman sa Bible, pero meron po mga conditions. So kung babasahin ko lang po halimbawa yung itong itong batas po natin uh, regarding sa marriage. Sabi niya, a marriage is a special contract between is a special contract uh, special is a special union. Uh, let me check out. Sorry. Kasi kapag sinabi po natin absolute divorce, it is unlimited power eh. Parang pati power ng constitution sa power ng God. Binayolate mo na. Uh, somehow, it will become a historical revisionism because kung titignan mo po yung marriage, hindi po galing sa Estado eh. Ang marriage galing po sa Diyos, isa sa Bible. So if you would change the etymology, that is corruption of the word name. In other words, kung titingnan mo, marriage is not being legislated by the state. It is being legislated by the divine order of God. And anyone who destroys the, the divine order of God, destroy mankind. So, pag titingnan mo naman yung marriage, again, or family, puro siya biblical eh. I don't know kung sino yung author niya ng family or ng marriage. Siguro mga, uh, kung lang yan, mga 14th century. Pero as far as I know, the first lawmaker, Moses, 5th century yun eh. So if you would change now yung marriage, para siyang, ha, para siyang historical revisionism eh. Saka meron nakalagay doon, is a permanent union eh. If it's a permanent union, no, no law. Ano can break that unless you change the constitution. As long na nandun yung constitution, you cannot break the law. Otherwise, the rule of law breaks you. Me, or even the lawmakers. So, uh, sa title ko pa lang po tinitignan, pasensya na po kayo. So, uh, meron pa nga ako nakita dito, solvent eh. Ang nakalagay sa, man, sa executive order po, Permanent union, hindi po ito chemical reaction. So, I ano mean, common sense lang ba? Dissolution. So sabi niya, pag tinignan mo yung dissolution, wala yung dissolution. Ipupunta nga yung solvation. It's a solvent. It's a chemical reaction. So marriage is not a chemical reaction. It is an institution that is being ordained by God. At ang nakalagay nga po doon sa Article 15, Sabi niya, the family is the basic unit of society. Sabi niya, the, the government, including legislators, should protect the family. So once you change this, you're actually opening a Pandora's box to destroy not the whole family. You are destroying the whole nation. Sabi ko nga, unless you change the constitution. Thank you for Thank you rin po, Pastor, uh, Pastor Ko. Um, to reiterate, yung mga bills na ito are founded on the constitutional principles and recognizing that other principle of separation of church and state na, o nga siguro marami sa atin kinasal na sa kanika nilang simbahan and therefore some of us may access dun sa church annulment. Pero yung civil aspect, no? recognizing also the secular aspect nitong pinag-uusapan nating mga bills and the remedies na gusto nating i-provide. Dahil pinalindigan ng komite, these bills are in fact pro-marriage, pro-family, pro-children. So let us uh, continue the, the hearing. I'd like to call now from the Alliance for Family Foundation, uh, will it be Mr. Lowe's or Attorney Arzaga to speak? Attorney Joel Arzaga, Vice President. 
Good morning, Madam Chair, Senator De La Rosa. I am uh, Attorney Joel Zaga. I'm from the Alliance for the Family Foundation. With me is the Chairman, Mr. Timothy Loss. And we are here to express our opposition to Senate Bill 67, 288, and 356 and 504. And at the outset, it is our position that the proposed bills are contrary to the provisions of the 1987 Constitution, which endeavored to strengthen and protect the family as a basic autonomous social institution and marriage as an inviolable social institution. This constitutional mandate is clear in Article 2, Section 12, which states that the state recognizes the sanctity of the family and shall protect and strengthen the family as a basic autonomous social institution. Furthermore, in Article 15 of the Constitution, it is provided that the state recognizes the Filipino family as a foundation of the nation, and accordingly, it shall strengthen its solidarity and actively promote its development. In Section 2, the Constitution provides that marriage as an inviolable social institution is a foundation of the family and shall be protected by the state. Thus, the permanent and indissoluble nature of marriage, as understood by the sovereign Filipino people who ratified the 1987 Constitution, must be protected and preserved. This permanent character of marriage as envisioned by the Constitution is further bolstered when these constitutional provisions are read in conjunction with the definition of marriage provided for in the Family Code as a special contract of permanent union between a man and a woman entered into in accordance with law for the establishment of conjugal and family life. Thus, it is our position that the termination of marriage runs afoul the Constitution and established laws of the land. Furthermore, there have been studies that have shown certain harmful effects of divorce, particularly on children, as children who experience the divorce of their parents are likely to suffer adverse effects on their academic performance, physical and mental health, with an increased possibility to be exposed to drug, alcohol, and even sexual abuse. Lastly, children of divorce are also likely to resort to divorce, thus perpetuating a cycle of failed marriages. Despite all this, in a study by Dr. Judith Wallerstein, in a summary of a 25-year study of children of divorce, she posits that it is in adulthood that children of divorce suffer the most. The lack of inner images of a man and a woman in a stable relationship and, their members, and the memories of their parents' failure to sustain their marriage badly hobble their search for a stable marriage and family life as well. Are these catastrophic effects perhaps justified by the benefits to the divorcing parents? The research paper entitled, Does Divorce Make People Happy, says otherwise. In a survey, it was provided that divorce did not reduce symptoms of depression for unhappily married adults or raise their self-esteem or increase their sense of mastery on average compared to unhappy spouses who stayed married. Also, the vast majority of divorces happened to adults who had been happily married five years previously, in which, in which it was found that divorce was associated with dramatic declines in happiness and psychological well-being compared to those who stayed married. And importantly, the study found that two out of three unhappily married adults who avoided divorce ended up happily married five years later. These studies on divorce on average show that it provides no benefit to spouses, but rather cause catastrophic harm to the children. With regard to the marital violence and abuse that may happen, Divorce can provide no real benefit that is not available through legal separation. In the U.S., for example, while 50% of first marriages will end in divorce, 70% of second marriages will do so. One third of spouses who remarry will be happy with that decision, but two out of three will not. As such, it is not worth severely damaging the institution of marriage by legalizing divorce in order to produce an illusory benefit for a relatively small number of spouses who already have a remedy in legal separation. A survey, a survey of divorce rates around the world suggests that if it is permitted here, at least one-fourth of our marriages will end in divorce. Possibly the 50% rate of the U.S. is more realistic because of our closer cultural ties. Either way, we must recognize the reality that if divorce is enacted, many of us will experience, if perhaps not our own divorce, that of some of our children and grandchildren and continuing generations beyond with devastating consequences. Therefore, we urge the preservation of the welfare of our people 
by preserving the sanctity and permanent character of marriage. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator De La Rosa. Thank you, Attorney Arzaga. So aside from the other option mentioned earlier, yung annulment, uh, mamaya itanong din natin sa ating mga uh, ibang abogado, the, the attorneys around the table, as well as yung mga galing sa gobyerno, sa, sa DOJ for example, yung isa pang option ng legal separation. Sa pagkaalam po kasi ng komite sa ngayon, o nga, may legal separation, but if the two spouses are not in that loving relationship anymore, kung mapaibig sila sa iba, and they wish to commit to that other person in marriage as well, hindi pa pwede sa separation. So let's just um, pursue that and other points as well. Yes, Senator. Ah, yes, of course, Senator De La Rosa. Attorney Arsaga. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Um, may tanong na ako sa iyo. Yes, sir. Ito muna. Uh, let's, uh, muna. For the meantime, Let's forget mo na being biblical. Let's forget mo na being constitutional. Let's focus mo na sa, let's be practical mo na. Yes, Pagmatik mo na tayo dito sa day-to-day -day na buhay ng isang pamilyang Pilipino. Yes, sir. Halimbawa, kung meron tayong divorce law, ano ang mas maraming apiktadong pamilyang Pilipino. Ito bang pag may divorce law? Of course, ikaw pro-pamilya, ako pro-pamilya rin ako. Ayaw na ayaw ko na magsasapir yung mga bata na maiiwan. Walang bata talaga na gusto maghiwalay ang kanyang parents. Wala talaga. Kahit sino? Kahit sino tanongin mo? Meron tayong divorce law. Hindi happy yung mag mga parents. Naghiwalay. Mga bata magsasapir, di ba? Ano mas maraming magsasapir ng mga bata kung may divorce law? Itong pamilya na nag-abil ng divorce law o itong pamilya kung walang divorce law, pala, patuloy pa rin nagsasapir ang mga bata dahil sa day-to-day -day na away alitan ng kanilang mga parents. Psychologically affected din yung mga bata, trauma, experience nila. Sa tingin mo lang, ha? E, abogado ka man, anong mas marami epektado pag may divorce law? E, focus mo tayo sa pamilya. Of course, ang, ang divorce naman talaga ay para di doon sa mga parents, di ba, na gusto maghiwalay. Kalimutan mo natin yung parents. Doon mo tayo sa mga anak magtutok. Kalimutan mo natin yung parents. Anak mo lang. Sana mas marami magsapir. Kung may divorce law, na maghiwalay ang mga parents, din mga bata magsasapir, o walang divorce law na ang mga bata patuloy pa nagsasapin kung sige ako yung parents. As tingin mo, anong mas marami. Kasi general welfare ba ang habang natin dito? Yes, sir. Welfare of the majority. Yes, sir. So yun mo natin tutukan. Anong, anong opinion mo, Atore? Thank you, sir, for your question, sir. In my opinion, sir, um, the presence of the divorce law would, in the long run, uh, pose a greater uh, prejudice to the families despite the uh, suffering that children may um, experience and this is because um, through a divorce law that possibility of reconciliation is ultimately eliminated and uh, while the marriage is still subsisting because of the absence of a divorce law ultimately there is a possibility for the family to reconcile and to um, work on the stability of uh, their marriage and their family life here yes sir Yung nga, kung, kung sinasabi lang, kung may second chance pa. Pero kung wala na talaga ang chance, no way na talaga sila mag-reconcile. Paano natin ma-remedy yung uh, sitwasyon na yan? Kasi mga bata din talaga. Yes, Traumatic na sa mga bata na sige, batuhan yung mga parents, di ba? Uh, yun, yun lang, I, I'm just posing, ako, parent din ako eh. I'm just posing this uh, situation. Situation 1, situation 2. Saan dito ang mas maraming negatively affected? Kung just in case ganun. Kasi ha, para matayos kabutihan ng lahat talaga. Eh, kung ano, marinig mo talaga. Marinig mo rin yung side ng yes, mga nag continue nagsasapir, di ba? Yes, nagsasapir na sila, mga parents na ayaw sa present status, estado nila na being married, nagsasapir din yung mga bata. Yes, sir. Oh, so, sana magtutulong ka tayo. Paano natin maabot yung ganong 
final conclusion para kabutihan ng lahat. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Pero hindi ko sasabi na kalimutan mo na yung uh, Biblia, kalimutan mo na yung Constitution. Guide pa rin natin yun. Pero ako lang dito, day to day na buhay natin, anong impact nito talaga? Gusto natin maabot yan. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Salamat, ma'am, Madam Chair. I'm not Senator DeRoy and uh, Attorney Arzaga. And speaking again of the Constitution, it is of course true that the family is the basic unit of society and marriage is an inviolable institution according to our Constitution. At the same time, we already have various laws dissolving marriage in various ways. Uh, as mentioned, just mentioned, we already have legal separation. We have Article 36 of the Family Code. But what we are doing here this morning, dito sa komite natin, is expanding the grounds for dissolution. And as I keep repeating, allowing second chances uh, to people, for more people. More importantly, at gaya nung kinuwento nung ating nag-share ng kanilang personal narratives, divorce assumes that the marriage has been broken. It's not divorce that breaks the marriage. It's the abuse or the oppression or the lovelessness that preceded it. And speaking of that abuse, oppression, lovelessness, um, and its effects as well on the children, maybe at, at this point I'd like to uh, ask uh, uh, already uh, the chairperson of Maya, the Feminist Collective, uh, to share your own experiences uh, uh, as a child uh, of divorce. Maybe you could give your own personal thoughts as well as the position of the Maya Collective, uh, Ms. Gana Takahashi. Good day, everyone. Good morning, Senator Risa, Senator Bato. Um, thank you for inviting us here. Uh, we would like to begin with a few words, um, not ours, but of children of separated parents. If keeping the family together means domestic violence, lack of family support, substance abuse, infidelity, and health and financial incapacities, then I don't want it. It's better to get a divorce than stay in a toxic family environment. I personally believe that those who experience domestic violence should be given another chance to restart their lives from massive marriage failures. Siyempre, Families should always strive to maintain happy relationships. Pero hindi natin ito makakamit kung may nagpupumilit. Lalong-lalo na kung ang estado ang nagpupumilit. These are the words of children who have had to experience the pains of their single parents. Dahil dito, ang organisasyon namin ay naniniwala sa kakayahan ng isang divorce bill na muling makamit ang buhay at ginhawa para sa mga single parents at anak ng mga ito. I myself am a child whose parents got divorced abroad when she was little. I know what it is like to go through the process. While there is no question that divorce is hard for us kids, it is a far cry better than raising your children in a violent, abusive, angry or deeply resentful marriage. After the divorce, I started to see the positive effects of the separation, in contrary to what attorney said earlier. Yes, there is unhappiness, but it is temporary. There is no more shouting, no more conflicts. My family became as nurturing as ever. If you stay married for the sake of your children, you expose them to daily arguments shouting, and violence. When parents stay in a bad marriage, kids have to cope with the separation. Divorce is a legal mechanism for ending marital relationships. That's it. It is not the breakdown of families. It is not the decline of morals. It is not the end of religious faith. Naiintindihan din namin ang panig mula sa katoliko at tradisyonal na pamumuhay. But we are a secular state. Sabi mismo ng Constitution na ang Estado muna ang may otoridad na mamuno para sa buong bansa. And not religious groups. Where no religious groups has the right to define law policy for the entire population. One of the best mental health professionals here in the Philippines, Dr. Del Castillo, since we are talking about psychological effects, he noted that divorce can have a positive impact on happiness. 
It is true that divorce can make you less happy, but this is temporary. Research shows that in the long term, you become happier and overall psychologically healthier after the divorce. And that's what happened to me. I am pro-divorce because I first-handedly experienced what it is like to stay in a bad marriage through my parents. Nakakalukot isipin na maraming mga magulang, mga ina, na hindi makaalas sa relasyon dahil walang divorce sa Pilipinas. We began with anecdotes from children of separated parents. Now we will end with anecdotes as well. Now that I know better, I see my family, a family with divorced parents, as complete and as whole as families with married parents. Hindi mahalaga kung dalawa ang magulang mo. Mas mahalaga na makakabuhay kayo ng mapayapa at puno ng pagmamahal. It's unfair for me to see single parents suffer like my mom has. Dahil nagkahiwalay sila ng tatay ko, kumakayod siya ng mas matagal at malala dahil wala na kaming suporta. Imagine the lack of employment and opportunities in this country. What more ko ang mismong mga single parents ay nag experience pa rin ng mga additional pang emotional at financial stress dahil sa paghihiwalay. Hindi dahil hindi kayo kompleto, ay may mali na sa inyo. Hindi dahil hindi kayo nakatira sa isang bubong, ay di ka na nila mahal. Mas mabuti may pagmamahal ng hiwalay kesa sa sakit ng magkasama pa rin. Maraming salamat po. Oh, wow. Maraming salamat sa iyo, Kana. I'm sure all the parents in the room sobrang naanting sa sharing mo. Thank you so much. Uh, and for those words of wisdom, no, from the mouth of babes, mas mabuti pa yung... Uh, yung sakit ng paghihiwalay kesa yung uh, sakit ng pagsasamang hindi naman karapat dapat sa isang pamilya at kasal. Really, uh, just at this point around the table, I want to thank all who have shared even your painful experiences and memories from Sina Miss Len and Stella and Sir Mark to Kana and Pastor Augusto. Mahirap talaga i-share yung mga masasakit nating karanasan but let's use this as uh, ingredients building blocks uh, to, to find something better across our differences on these issues. So, marami salamat, Kana. Uh, just to complete our inputs from our resource persons on the sanctity of the family, um, I haven't forgotten, we do have one more uh, resource person from the Coalition of Concerned Families of the Philippines, Attorney Aldwin Salumbites. Senator Antiveros, Madam Chairperson, it is a privilege to address you again, this time on behalf of the Coalition for Righteousness, Justice, and Truth. Now, Your Honor, we need to point out that all pending divorce bills contain a subtle yet dangerous component. All pending divorce bills will pave the way for bigamy or polygamy where divorced persons are allowed to have successive marriage partners. While most people focus on the dissolution of marriage aspect without paying attention to the aftermath or the continuing saga of a divorce, as stated in the explanatory note of Senate Bill Number 288, the expressed intent of the proposed law is to make it more accessible for Filipinos to terminate a marriage. The flip side will also grant abusive spouses an easier way to dump their husband or replace their wife in exchange for a new partner of their preference. Ito mismo ay magbubunga ng madaling proseso ng pagpapalit ng asawa. Pati mga abusado, palikero, babaero, at walang tamang konsepto ng commitment o responsibilidad makikinabang sa diborsyo. You know, as a legal practitioner who has closely studied actual cases of marriages that were rendered void, there are no real winners but only victims. Walang panalo 
sa anumang kaso ng annulment o divorce. Let me add that I myself do not handle annulment cases. Having said this, I know for a fact that there are many victims, mostly children of the divorced couples. Now, who are the real losers in court? Bagamat masasabi ko po na hindi po ako nag-handle ng annulment cases sa kasalukuyan, siguro mga mahigit sampung taon na rin po, naranasan ko kung papaano humawak, maglitis, at magtry ng mga annulment cases. So I myself can say that I have first-hand experience when it comes to cases whose objective is the dissolution of marriages. Going back to my question, who are the real losers in court? The answer, Filipino families who are split and torn apart. And in this sad scenar scenario, Your Honor, we need to be silent and we need to hear God's voice echoing with a resounding sound. What God has put together, let no man put asunder. And that is from Matthew 19, verse 6. And no wonder, the book of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 16 says, God hates divorce. For the Lord cares for children, families, and parents whom he has joined together in the holy sacrament of matrimony. Mahalaga sa paningin ng Diyos Ama, ang kasal, ang pagsasama, ito ay sagrado sa paningin ng Diyos. Ito ay may espesyal na basbas buhat sa may akda, hindi lamang ng kasal, kundi ng ating buhay. Having said that, it cannot be overemphasized that God is the author of matrimony. And from there, from marriages, from weddings, from matrimonies, He brings forth families that we regard as basic, fundamental unit of our society. Marriage is God's design, even if some of you, as I can see, are nodding in disagreement. But allow me this time. We must defer to the author who gives life to each person. He also seeks to give joy to every home and hope to every troubled marriage. Wala pong imposible sa Diyos. Kung naniniwala po tayo that God exists and that He is all-powerful and that He is good and that He is omniscient and omnipotent, let me repeat again, walang imposible sa Diyos. Walang problema ang mag-asawa na hindi kayang ayusin ng Diyos Ama. Kaya hindi natin dapat tuldukan ang kanilang pagsasama. Sino po tayo para sabihin wala ng pag-asa ang mag-asawa? Dahil walang limitasyon ang kapangyarihan ng Panginoon, walang dahilan para tayo sumuko. We should not use the term irreconcilable differences in the context of Filipino culture and marriage. If a strong nation is composed of resilient homes, para saan pa ang konsepto ng bayanihan, damayan, at kapitbahayan Kung mabilis itumba ng bagyo at pagsubok ang pagsasama ng mag-asawa. Now, if our Constitution and our laws regard marriage as an inviolable social institution, and let me stress that the Constitution classifies and regards marriage as an inviolable social institution, it only deserves full state protection. Laws should be passed to strengthen marriages from trials and storms. Absolute divorce is not a solution. It is a quick escape. It is actually a call to abandon ship and jump overboard. In the context of family, we cannot afford to give up easily. Muli, if the family is at stake, kung ang nakataya ang pagsasama ng mag-asawa, kung ang nakataya 
ang integrity at ang pagiging solid ng pamilya, we cannot afford to just give up easily. Just early this morning, nakipagkwentuhan po ako sa aking panganay na anak na si Bea, who just turned 18 years old. At maging ang mga anak ko, maging ako, maging ang mga malalapit po sa akin ng mga kapamilya, may mga narrative din po kami na mga personal, mga narrative namin na direct at saka first hand. At ang naging usapan po namin na aking panganay na anak, marami po kami mga nakita ang pag-aaway na mag-asawa. Mismo maging sa pagitan ko at ng aking asawa, nakikita rin po ng aking mga anak ang aming tampuhan, ang aming hindi pagkakaunawaan, ang pagtataas namin ng boses. Pero sa kabila nun, because of the marriage bond, because of our pledges, because of our vows made not only before the people who attended our wedding, but these are vows that we recited in church before the Lord, pinagsisikapan po namin na ayusin ang aming mga gusot at lampasan ang aming mga pinagdadaanan. If, if I may ask you, kasi yes, Your Honor. siguro karamihan natin on the floor today have had or have loving marriages. For the few na nakapagkwento kanina, na nagsubok ng lahat ng pagtitiis, pagdadasal, pagpapag-counsel. Halimbawa po, si, si Miss si Miss Len, ni Ray, si Miss Stella, hinabo ng itak. Do we advise them? Work it out? Reconcile? Ganun po ba yung ating sasabihin sa kanila? That is not my position, Your Honor. Hindi po yun ang aking, uh, ang aking pamanhik. That is not what I am proposing. In fact, I am not saying that for every conceivable situation of conflict inside the home, a counseling ang nag-iisang solusyon. Pakinggan niyo po muna ako. Hindi naman po yun ang aking attorney, parang nag-iisang formula. Attorney, the chair has been listening. Formula. The chair has been listening, attorney. Thank you, Your Honor. Please proceed. Thank you. And as I said a while ago, sa kabila nga po ng mga nasaksiyan naming eksena ng uh, hindi pagkakaunawan o tampuhan, away, hindi po na natiling nakapako sa mga traumatic na sitwasyon ang aming pinagdaanan at karanasan. Dahil nga po, habang may buhay, may pag-asa. Habang may pananampalataya, magsisika po tayo na ayusin ang mga gusot at ang mga problema ay lampasan. At ang nasabi nga po ng aking anak, kung ang problema, violence, kung ang problema may mister na basagulero, nananakit o drug addict, tugunan yung problema. Hindi po natin dapat maging puntirya ang kanilang kasal at pagsasama. Dahil kung meron pong absolute divorce law, just a few years ago, we realized as a family, marami po kami mga masasayang tagpo bilang mga pamilya ang hindi na namin mararanasan. Kagaya ng golden wedding anniversary ng aking mga in-laws. Ayoko naman pong ikwento yung mga naging karanasan at sitwasyon nila na sa isip ng maraming tao dito ay eh, pwede lang sabihin hopeless case na yung mga yan. Wala nang tsansa na maayos pa. Walang pag-asa. Pero dahil nga po hindi naging ganon ang aming isipan, hindi naging ganon ang aming tugon, salamat sa Diyos at sa biyaya niya, nilampasan ang mga problema na palitan ng masasayang mga kwento, mga gandang tagpo, importanteng mga okasyon at hindi lang po okasyon These are joyous marriage celebrations. Whatever pains, whatever hurts were brought about by those instances were all replaced, not only by a hope, not only by a prayer, but by actual realities that problems can be worked out. As I said, we must not legislate to promote dissolved marriages and broken homes. We should not license multiple marriages that lead to dysfunctional families, often described as similar to scrambled eggs, naghalo-halo na. At kung ang kasal ay hindi parang kaning isusubo, ang pamilya hindi dapat gawing chapsoy, sapin-sapin, o pinaghalong estrelyadong itlog. We should fully recognize that divorce also leads to dire consequences. And that side of the truth is not expressed in Senate Bill Numbers 288 and 356. 
While there may be good intentions behind the move to spare couples from going through a long and costly court process that leads to annulment or divorce, could we not channel our efforts toward a shorter and inexpensive marriage counseling or reinforce restoration programs? Yes, please hold that thought. We will return to that. But I'd like to call Ms. Stella kasi... Uh, meron po siyang uh, nais sabihin at this point dun sa mga puntong nire-raise ni Attorney Salumbides. Uh, Stella. Good morning. Uh, Nire-respect po po ako ano yung sinasabi niyo po na masaya kayo. We're happy for that for you po. Thank you, ma'am. Yung sa amin lang po, based on my experience, kasi masaya po kayo ng kinasal, what about you? Forced marriage. At the time, six years old po yung anak ko. Lumib up. Dahil naranasan nila, nakikita nila kung anong naging sitwasyon namin. Kung anong naging karanasan namin nung habulin ka ng tatay ng ita, pagtatagain ka, mumurahin ka sa maraming tao. Nagsisimba po kami linggo-linggo. Yung asawa ko po, nagpipreach every Saturday. Kasi sa Catholic, bawat, bawat uh, puro po, may ina-assign ng pari na mag maghahawak o magpapaliwanag tungkol sa Bible sharing po. The grocery. Yes po. Ayun ang ginagawa po namin. Pero wala pong nangyari. Kumausap po ako sa isang pare, kinausap ko po kung anong pwede niyang ma-advise. Nakita niya kung anong gano'ng kahirap o paghihirap yung naranasan namin. Ayun sabi niya, para po mani po kayo, mag-file po kayo ng annulment. Kung sakali man, I will help you to file the, an annulment in the church dahil alam ko kung anong nararanasan niyo na, nasabi niyo sa akin. Noong 2017 po, pumasa yung divorce sa Congress. Nasa Surigao ako noon. Anong sabi nung anak ko? Nag-text siya, Mama, Mama, tuwang-tuwa yung anak ko. Naakala niya, okay na yung divorce. Mama, okay na daw yung divorce. Pasado na daw. Sabi ko, sino ang sinasabi? Anak, nakita ko po sa balita, pati yung mga kaklase ko sa school, tuwang-tuwa na napasa na yung divorce. Sabi ko, anak, hindi pa. Hindi pa napasa yung divorce. Ay, bakit po? Di ba yun ang sabi sa balita? Pasa na po. Hindi pa. Nasa Congress pa lang. Kailangan pa lang yung pagdidibatihan sa Senado. Kailangan. Bakit kailangan nilang uh, patagalin pa yun, ma? Alam ko kung ano, gaano kahirap yung pinagdaanan mo. Gaano kahirap yung pinagdaanan natin. Yung time na yun, kung lagi kong naiisip kung anong ginawa ng asawa ko, na nagtatrabaho ko dito sa Maynila, pinalayas yung mga anak ko, tinawagan ako ng mister ko, kunin mo yung mga anak mo dito kung hindi papatayin ko yung mga yan. Pati yung nanay mo, wala silang karapatan dito. Masakit po sa akin dahil wala akong magawa. Nandito ako sa, sa Maynila para maghanap buhay. May support ako sana ko. Lalo na yung bunso ko may sakit. Anong ginawa ko po? Umuwi ako, kinuha ko yung mga anak ko, pati yung mama ko, dahil baka tutuhanin niya yung pagbabanta nila sa buhay. Yun lang po. Thank you, Ms. Stella. Before you continue, uh, Attorney Salumbides, the Chair would just like to add um, my uh, support for the affirmation that Ms. Stella made. Na for probably the majority of us who had or who have happy marriages, And by happy, hindi naman natin sinasabing perfect. Of course, dumadaan din tayo sa problema. Of course, we struggle through the solutions to our problems. Kaya tayo tumatagal. Kaya nagkakaroon ng silver, golden, and beyond wedding anniversaries. These bills are actually not for us. They are for probably, kasi eh, hindi ko pa naman ma mabibila ngayon, I don't think aabot sa 25-50% na sinasabi kanina ng ating isang resource person, but probably a minority, yet still citizens, na nangangailangan after all the struggles to love, to commit, to sacrifice, to endure, to solve problems repeatedly, ay umabot sa punto na, ito nga, mga advocates ay humingi talaga ng pagdinig ng, ng Senado. So just to... Just to um, Uh, put that on record also. So if you could uh, conclude, uh, Attorney Salumbides, you were on the uh, points of how to solve the marital problems through counseling and through reconciliation processes. Yes, Madam Chairperson. At salamat po. At dun sa sinabi nga po ni Ate Estela, eh talaga pong masakit ang pinagdaanan ninyo. At hindi ko po ipagpapalagay na alam ko yung extent na naging sugat ng inyong mga karanasan Pero ito po ang aming nais, ito ang aming panalangin na bagamat 
itong sinusulong na batas na ito na hindi naman po ako ah, nag-propose, uh, hindi naman po ako nagpunta rito para makipagdebate o makipagtalo, kundi nagbibigay nga po ng aming pananaw at posisyon, ang masasabi ko po, kahit hindi ko batid ang sugat at sakit na naramdaman ninyo, ito po ay hindi lingid sa kaalaman ng Panginoon. Yung mga iyak ninyo, yung mga karamdaman ng mga anak ninyo, alam po ng Diyos yan. At nais po niya na magbigay hindi lamang ng pag-asa, kundi ng lunas at solusyon. At bilang abogado, nais ko po na kayo at Estela at ang anak ninyo at ang pamilya ninyo ay huwag mapabilang doon sa kaunti o doon sa minority na masasabi nga po natin kinakailangang divorce ang maging solution sa kanilang problema ng domestic o pampamilya. And as I wind up, while there are spouses who are abusive, violent, immoral, and even addicted, the problem is not their marriage. Ang problema, hindi yung kasal. Ang problema, it is the person's character. Kung ang problema ay droga, dapat direktang tugunan ang problema at hindi pagbuntunan ng sisi ang kasal na sagrado at itinatag ng Diyos at muling pinagtitibay ng ating pamahalaan at ng konstitusyon. Madam Chairperson, our coalition intends to file an official statement expressing our full position in opposition to Senate Bill Numbers 288 and 356. And speaking for the various sectors and organizations that we represent, the emergence of legislation threatening the foundations of marriage, our families, our sacred human identity among others, cause deep concern among those of us who wish to uphold values predicated on God's word. And as I end, let me quote Psalm chapter 11, verse 3. This is one verse that gives us this question. And the question is, when the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? When the foundations of law and order have collapsed, to paraphrase, what can the senators do? If the foundations of family, home, and marriages are being threatened and destroyed, what can Christian lawyers do? What can our nation do? What can the Filipino people do? If the foundations are destroyed, we must work together to strengthen, to protect, to support, and to uphold it, not to dissolve it. Thank you, Senator Antiveros. Thank you, Attorney Salumbides. Well, the Chair's own reflection uh, on uh, the biblical passages is that wala pong attempt na wasakin ang kahit ano sa pamamagitan nitong mga bills na pinag-uusapan natin. Rather, attempt po ito na magbuhay muli mula sa pagkasira. And also, the Chair would like to remind uh, all of us that uh, any bills referred by the Senate to the respective committees para dinigin have passed the test of uh, being based on constitutional principles. Hindi ko po sinasabi hindi pwedeng kasuhan, maaring umabot tayo sa ganyan, but imposible. May aabot sa committee ko o kahit anumang committee na bill uh, which would, for example, enable bigamy or polygamy or any other violations of the revised penal code. So, just to also uh, remind us of that. Ngayon, mga kasama, we have talked a lot about the Constitution, constitutional principles. Uh, dumako naman po tayo su sa sufficiency or insufficiency, uh, third issue natin for the day, third theme, sufficiency na ating existing policy framework. So, are our present laws sufficient enough para magbigay ng relief dun sa mga uh, mag-asawa o mga individual na dumudulog ngayon tungkol sa dissolution of marriage. Yes, we have legal separation. We have annulment. We also have declaration of nullity in our family code. So, bakit nga ba isinusulong nitong mga panukala yung dissolution of marriage? May I call now on uh, the Department of Justice? Uh, will it be ASEC, Carpio, or 
State Council Sadian uh, to shed light on these questions? State Council Sadian. Yes, ma'am. So, sapat na po ba yung ating kasalukuyang remedies of annulment, of legal separation, uh, yung ating family code para sagutin yung mga pangangailangan na intention nitong mga dissolution of marriage bills na punuin. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning uh, to our other resource persons. Um, currently, Madam Chair, uh, the, the present laws are uh, already addressing the various issues involving the family. However, with regard to the uh, four bills that are subject of deliberation of this public hearing, we shall be um, studying it in a uh, in uh, parallel with the existing law so that we may be able to uh, officially present the department's position regarding these measures, ma'am. That would be very helpful, uh, State Council. Also, on the yung isang issue na lumabas kanina, yung papel, papel pa rin ba dapat o hindi ba dapat ng Solgen dito sa mga desisyon, sa mga ganitong aplikasyon, ganitong mga proseso. Uh, yes, ma'am, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, our present procedures um, uh, deputize our prosecutors. The Solgen deputizes our prosecutors to oversee uh, the prosecution of these cases in courts, and uh, that is the current setup. And we shall look at the bills if there are any proposals to uh, change these procedures, ma'am. Thank you, State Council. Whether the bills would change the procedures or um, complement them or, or complete them, or for that matter, I, I'm awaiting, the committee is awaiting the opinion of the DOJ, whether positive or negative, about any or all of these bills. Yes, Thank you very it. much, State Council. And so please submit that to the committee, as well as uh, I forgot to mention earlier to Attorney Salumbides, the committee will also wait for the submission of your statement. Thank you, Attorney. Could I ask now uh, from the DSWP, Democratic Socialist Women of the Philippines, Ms. Beth Angshoko, if you could also please address this issue of sapat na po ba o hindi pa ba sapat yung ating mga kasalukuyang uh, batas. Thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, uh, thank you for calling this historic uh, committee hearing. I bring the voices of 276 women's organizations, basically from the Son Visayas Mindanao, and most of them are uh, from the grassroots and communities. And therefore, I would like to premise my, my statement on that. Uh, in the communities where we work, separations happen left and right. Mm -hmm. you know, these are ordinary people. These are ordinary, ordinary men and women who have had enough of uh, abuse, of uh, differences, that they just decide to separate without making things legal. And therefore, one can only imagine what will happen if one or both of them eventually falls in love again and, and, and uh, decides to have another relationship. This is common in communities. Uh, and I dare say that this is not common amongst the rich because those who have money have options. One, they can go for annulment, uh, which as Ms. Anna said earlier, is a big business now. But it's a legitimate, it's a legitimate option for marriages that were not meant to be in the first place. Meaning there is legal, there is a technical, uh, uh, there is something missing in the requirements, declaration of nullity and annulment are for marriages that were uh, now from the beginning, void from the beginning. So it cannot apply to marriages that are legal but have broken down completely. That is the option that is not available. There is also legal separation, we know. But the legal separation al on only deals with uh, properties, with abode. You know, uh, we know of cases of couples who have had legal separation where the woman uh, has been abused for many years, for too many years, that 
when she was, when she grew old, she opted for legal separation. She said she could no longer bear it. But then it did not stop the abuse. Why? Because the husband felt that he still owned the woman. The power relation is maintained. And therefore, the woman, uh, I'm sorry, but she passed away uh, a few years back, uh, died married to this irresponsible, abusive husband. Although they, they were separated in terms of abode, they, had, uh, they, they have settled uh, questions of properties. But when you go to the communities, hindi po nila hahatiin ang batya at ang palanggana, ang kortina at ang silya, hindi po yan ang kailangan nila. Ang kailangan nila ay isang uh, proseso na ang kanilang legal na kasal ay mapapawalang visa. Let me just uh, uh, bring you to the fact that actually divorce is not new to, to the Philippines. We have had divorce like uh, practices pre-Spanish times. But when the Spaniards came, they replaced this with siete partidas, meaning there was only a legal separation. Uh, that's, that's what was uh, available. When the United States took over from the Spaniards, we had divorce. That was uh, uh, Act 2710, and this was only based, uh, this only had two grounds. Uh, the, 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 the American divorce law. But then when the, uh, when the uh, Japanese came, there was another divorce law. They replaced the American law with the, with the Japanese law, but this time it had 11 grounds. Uh, but then uh, after, after Japan, the, the United States came back. So they brought back that other kind of divorce law. We still, we had divorce. But even at that time, there have been advocacy, relentless advocacy for a divorce law that's more open and that's more liberal. Ms. Beth, hindi ba totoo rin na there are uh, indigenous peoples here in yes. the Philippines who also have uh, divorce uh, practices in their marriage and family lives? Right now, Madam uh, Cordilleras and Mindanao. Yes. Uh, it's still being practiced, and therefore, divorce is not foreign to us. And also, Ms. Beth, the, yes, the Muslims in the Philippines, yeah. in uh, their code of, uh, their, their family code. Yeah, family the, code. Sharia. Sharia, the Sharia law. Yes. The, all the, all the uh, uh, laws related to Muslims have been integrated into one during Microsoft's time, and, and uh, this has allowed uh, them to keep divorce. Uh, a legal divorce. So it's not foreign. It's not foreign to us. It's not a foreign concept. Because if uh, it's a foreign concept that we are going to base our opposition on divorce, uh, if this is a valid opposition, well, uh, democracy is foreign. Roman Catholicism is foreign. And therefore, uh, let's not go to that. No. The thing is, there is no option for countless of couples to make valid their, uh, their separations or the, the, the dissolution of their marriages that have broken down. Unfortunately, most of them are the poor ones. Uh, they are the ones who are without option. Divorce is also a class issue. I know couples who get married outside of the country to make sure that in the eventuality that they need a divorce, they would be able to get it. But how much is going to Hong Kong? How much is going to Singapore? You know, uh, that's, that costs a lot. I also know couples who just remain uh, in a live-in relationship because they, uh, they, are, uh, they believe that, you know, uh, when love is there, that is enough. Which brings me to, to the final point that as far as we know, divorce is not about religion. 
divorce is not about religion. This is about civil law that we are talking about. But the, at the same time, this is about the lives of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people who would want to start a new life. When I say start a new life, it's not even about getting married again immediately. If this is about, you know, uh, starting to get hold of your life, to decide for yourself, and to, uh, to live again with or without another partner. And, and women, women, as we have seen from the examples given to us, basically we do not want to, to, to separate from our husband or wife in the, at the first instance of abuse. No, especially women. We try and try and try and try until we feel that, you know, there is no solution. Especially or until abuse. some die yes. trying. Uh, uh, so, especially under abusive relationships, my question is, uh, I believe that uh, marriage is also a contract. And therefore, as a contract, there should be a way out. If the responsibility is under the contract, is not fulfilled. One, I know that some say that marriage, uh, it, it's a special contract because God is a witness. But then again, I do not believe, well, I'm not very religious, I do not believe that we have a cruel God who would want to choose abuse in marriages just so the marriage is preserved than happiness, giving another chance to his children, to his or her children. I believe that divorce should be made legal again in the country, uh, it should be reenacted, and I believe that it should not be as uh, very difficult to uh, to attain, like legal separate, uh, like uh, annulment, uh, and I believe that when there is divorce, at last, the corruption, the 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 uh, what do you the scams, the scams yeah. uh, involving annulment, will also be lessened. So, Madam Chair. Again, from my organization, and I carry with me, this has been processed by my organization, I carry with me the position of more than 267 women's organizations from the communities. Maraming salamat, Madam Chair. Thank you, Ms. Beth. And for that refreshing perspective na reenactment yung kinocontemplate nitong mga bill. So, that's not an historical revisionism, pero nag-survey ka pala nung, uh, history of divorce, at least in parts of the Philippines, among some peoples of the Philippines. Uh, yes, Attorney Jacob, you want to add something from the like, PAP? Yes. Thank you again, Madam Chair. A while ago, uh, I sort of reserved a little time for me to um, expound on my belief regarding the concept of divorce. So I'd like to share. Please party. proceed. Um, Madam Chair and uh, fellow panelists, I am both a psychologist and a lawyer by profession. I'm also a married person and by next year, my husband and I look forward to celebrating 15 years of fulfilling happy married life. Advanced happy golden anniversary from all <laughs> of us you. here at the Senate. Thank you, Madam Chair. I've been a psychologist for 49 years and a lawyer for 25 years now. As a psychologist, I spent roughly 20 years as a guidance counselor and a clinical psychologist before becoming a lawyer. As a lawyer in private practice, my area of specialization is family law. And therefore, most of the cases I handle are as regards uh, nullity of marriage, annulment of marriage. And I, I, I'd like to here emphasize the difference between annulment and declaration of nullity of marriage, as well as legal separation. Because uh, annulment is not synonymous with declaration of nullity of marriage. And 
um, whereas in church, there is only one term that is used, and there's only one basis for dissolving a marriage. In civil law, we have made specific uh, differences and uh, appellations for the different situations where a marriage is dissolved. So uh, I hope we all realize that annulment is not declaration of nullity. And legal separation does not allow us to contract another marriage. Anyway, um, I am in favor of a divorce law in the Philippines. And there are three major reasons why I believe that we should adopt a divorce law. First, I believe that we it is incumbent upon the state and incumbent upon legislators to preserve the inviolability of the concept of the institution of marriage. It is the duty of the state to protect the sanctity of the concept of marriage and to uphold the solemnity and the dignity of the commitment of parties to a marriage. As such, it is the duty of the state to ensure that it not only upholds such inviolab inviolability of commitment, but it should likewise guard against the travesty and mockery of such an institution. When the parties to a marriage are unable to uphold the dignity of the solemn commitment that they had made at the time that they committed to do so, then the state should seriously consider dissolving the bonds that may be causing distress, anxiety, and psychological damage to one or both of them. <clears throat> the state should likewise consider the deleterious effect on the children for whom the spouses are wholly and totally responsible. It is incumbent upon the state to maintain that if parties can no longer live up to maintaining the solemn vow of the basic marital commitments of mutual love, togetherness, respect and fidelity, and mutual help and support to one another, pursuant to Article 68 of the Code, then it should look to finding the available human solution to such a setup. Divorce is one of such a solution. Secondly, to spare the parties from totally wrecking themselves and one another. When a marriage has become dysfunctional and the parties contribute to the psychological deterioration, damage, and even harm and injury, to one or the other of the spouses, it is incumbent upon the state to provide a decent way out of such a toxic environment. No person should be compelled to live with another who is detrimental to one's psychological well-being, not to mention one's spiritual, social, and moral well-being, not to mention the damage experienced by the children. And thirdly, uh, the reason why I would favor a divorce law is to save the children in a dysfunctional marriage from forever being scarred and psychologically damaged. In a dysfunctional marriage, unfortunately, there are innocent parties who become necessarily emotionally, emotionally injured and sometimes even physically injured, as we have heard from the testimonies of our narrators, which will forever scar their personalities and the families that they will one day form in their adult lives. Children from dysfunctional families have a high probability of forming equally dysfunctional families themselves. And so, Madam Chair, a divorce law should have appropriate guard should have appropriate safeguards instituted by the state. While I believe that the marriage commitment should not function as a trap or a deception, I also believe that it is the duty of the state to ensure that a law 
that allows for its dissolution should not be used as a source of capriciousness or levity. Like any other contract entered into by parties under oath, the institution of marriage should likewise be safeguarded against being entered into like a game of chance. The state should institute sufficient safeguards to ensure that the extreme solution of divorce, thereby severing the marriage bond, is sufficiently proven. Likewise, as provided for in the present family code as regards legal separation, the stipulated safeguards required of the court may also be stipulated, as, is, uh, as it appears in uh, Bill number 356, I think. There is a need to revisit the provisions in the family code regarding nullity of void marriages, annulment of voidable marriages, and revising the concept of legal separation to be more responsive to the needs of parties involved in a dysfunctional marriage. I sincerely hope that our legislature will be able to carefully assess the present situation of marriages and families and arrive at a law that will provide an alternative to the entrapment which these parties find themselves in. There should be the possibility of dissolving dysfunctional bonds without recourse to proving that the parties were already defective at the time of the celebration of the marriage. Which I'm referring the to the declaration of reality in Article 36. It should consider the reality that somewhere along the line, during the period during which the parties shared the intimate relationship of marriage, they fell short of the lofty requirements of the state of married life. They are human. They are not divine. And therefore, it will be a compassionate law that will acknowledge that, though sadly a conf confession of failure, human beings are entitled to legally rectifying their initial short-sightedness and finding fulfillment in their own country without having to resort to illicit relationships and forming illegitimate families or migrating to far and distant lands to find marital happiness there. And may you also react to um, uh, the lady from the SWD. It is not true that if you get married in another country, uh, when you come back here, uh, rather, if you get married in another country, then you can obtain a divorce in that other country. No, married were, uh, valid were celebrated, valid in our country. So even if you get married wherever, that marriage, if valid according to our laws, will continue to be valid. So it does not help that you get married elsewhere. No, no, y y you may go, oh, perhaps, if you already have another marriage here. But if you have never been married and you go out of the country thinking that this is a safety valve, because if I get married in the US or elsewhere, then uh, that marriage will be easier to dissolve. No, no. Valid were celebrated, valid in our country. Thank Are you. Good. Thank you, Attorney Jacob. Yes. Uh, just one last point. All right, one last point. Uh, the state should provide advice and assistance to parties who need legal, social, and psychological assistance in the process of discerning, one, whether or not a marriage is susceptible to being repaired or not, and, and two, if it is- Attorney, we do have a cooling off period in the bills. Yes, yes please uh, continue. Yes, I, I, I know that. And uh, however, um, I think there should be sufficient opportunity for counseling um, in order for the parties to determine whether or not they are, whether such marriage is still susceptible to uh, a reconciliation. Uh, and also, if needed, legal assistance should be provided, which I know uh, is found in bill number 
356. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much also, uh, Attorney Jacob. Um, I'd like to ask a couple more resource persons uh, to speak to us on the welfare of children, the effect of uh, dissolution of marriage on the welfare of children, and then uh, hear from the rest of our government agencies na hindi, hindi pa nakapagbigay ng opinion sa mga bills na ito. So could I please call uh, first Mr. Yes, uh, of course, uh, Ms. Fanny, uh, and then I'll call uh, Mr. Paul Rojas. Yes, uh, Attorney Jacob, I'm happy that you are going to be 50 years married, and so am I. I'm going to be 50 years married soon. Oh, advanced yeah. happy golden then, Ms. Fanny, sa inyo ni Senator Kitt. My question is, a psychologist, and you have gone through um, assessing marriages. As a psychologist, when couples are having problems in their marriages, is it basically a psychological problem for either party or is it something more than just that financial problems, uh, stresses in the, in the relationships? And in 50 years of marriage, I'm sure you've gone through difficulties in your own marriage. I mean, I'm surrounded by couples who have also been married for 50 years. There was never any marriage that didn't go through some tests. Um, what, therefore, is your advice for couples who are going through problems like this? Because in the advocacy that we do in family and life, basically, it is a psychological problem. Thank you. Attorney Jacob. Uh, thank you for your comment, uh, Ms. Fenny. Um, while it is true that um, perhaps problems experienced by some couples have to do with finances and uh, uh, similar issues, um, this can be addressed by more discernment and assistance, psychological assistance, or maybe if the state is able to provide a uh, you know, like, for example, the state provides a public attorney's office where legal assistance is available. But maybe something like, uh, something similar to the services rendered by the POW can also be available for marriages in trouble. And uh, like I suggested, the, the initial step should be first to discern, is this an irreparable uh, situation. Can it be repaired? Can uh, Are the parties in this marriage willing and able to find a solution to this problem? So if it's financial, wherever you go, whether you have divorce or you have no divorce, a financial problem is a financial problem. So the solution is outside whether there is a divorce bill or not. The other thing is divorce. Divorce is not a solution for financial problems or even for, I'm sorry to say, battered women syndrome. But uh, it should be an option available to those who find that there is, there is no other way that this relationship can be resolved. For example, Attorney Jacob, if, if you wouldn't mind, could you wrap up? Because we need to hear two more resource persons on this topic and then hear from our government agencies. Lalo na si Yusek Ilagan, the lady from the SWD, has to leave okay. by one. Uh, so, Attorney Jacob. Madam Chair, it's all right. Uh, I, I can defer to another uh, sharer. I was just responding to Ms. Fanny, but maybe we can talk. Uh, after the session, uh, I defer to the chair's uh, decision to call on others who might want to share. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Jacob, and also Ms. Fanny. Of, and uh, it's very helpful to talk about uh, possible dissolution of marriage law and counseling, realizing that they are not mutually exclusive. No? So they are also they are both contemplated uh, by the bills. So thank you. Um, could we hear now from? Uh, Paul Rojas, also on the aspect of the effects of the solution of marriage on the welfare of children. Madam Chair, thank you. Um, 
good afternoon to all. Um, I am a, I have benefited from the Divorce Act of 1917. Um, my grandmother, who grew up in, uh, in Tacloban, Leyte, um, she was born in 1906, and while the Americans were still here, we were still in that era where it was customary for ma young maidens to be forcibly married to any Tom, Dick, or Harry who touched their hand, who dared touch their hand. No, and um, incidentally, this dude did just touch her hand. He stole a kiss. So it was beyond any argument that she should be married, right? Turns out this dude um, is kind of sick in the head. He would, he would beat up my grandmother until, until her lips would bleed. And then he would suck on them. And it was the con cons consumption of blood that sort of gave him this high. Okay. So I am happy that uh, because of Divorce Act of uh, 1917, uh, thank you for mentioning that, um, I do not have that blood running in my veins. No. Um, uh, that blood has predatorial inclinations and uh, I do sympathize with my colleagues here. Um, I do recognize that many of them have been married to predators, to parasites, to sloths, and even ego trippers. No. Um, these are the kinds of people that you know a a regular person can hardly keep up with you know, on, the, on a daily basis. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to further a little bit um, my discussion um, in saying that, you know, because we have absolute divorce, we have had absolute divorce and it has been recognized officially in the Philippines, uh, this problem on divorce is really just an issue among Christians. It's just among Christians, okay? That being the case, this is a human right violation. Okay? And uh, uh, earlier there was mention of, you know, these people are just a minority. You know, if we follow the same line of thought, um, we shouldn't be spending, or, or there shouldn't have been any formulation of laws regarding our seniors, our PWDs. Because it's a minority. Lang yan, eh. Uh, if we follow that same line of thought. So, no. And another thing about um, marriage being sacred, um, in a way, but l let's see. If there was an island where people happened to, you know, survive from a capsized ship, there's an island. There was no order, no state. People will still partner. In other words, if there's no law, cohabitation will, will amount. So this institution of divorce as part of our law gives us the opportunity to be lawful. At least one half of the family. If the other half just wants to go gallivanting, that's up to him. So this divorce will bring about Accountability, order and lawfulness, and a lot of healing from continuous pain. Did you know that even among, uh, there, there was a study among invading forces during the Normandy invasion. Sorry. That soldiers under fire for more than 60 days became psychiatric casualties. 60 days. Can you imagine ordinary people who are not even trained 
to be uh, fearing for their lives day and night more than 60 days. Um, I'd like to uh, go back at why um, annulment is a farce for the divorce advocates. You see, the Catholic Church goes by the principle of full knowledge and full consent. Annulment tries to prove that then unknown grounds for annulment were pre-existing before the exchange of vows and up to the point at which vows were indeed exchanged. Before 1987, only the Catholic Church exercised annulment. And then there was the family code where uh, annulment is now pervading into state law. Okay. Now, other Christian religions don't exercise annulment. So now they're being dragged into this thing called annulment against their will, against their practice, against their belief. And even if their religion allowed for divorce, those who need to divorce, which of course may not, as it is the law of the land. An error of then President Corey, it was found out in the in Congress, uh, in the previous Congress, uh, to make this gift to then Cardinal Sin for people power as a gesture of indebtedness. It is therefore a religious bigotry pervading into state law. This is exactly the point of human rights being violated. One that is forced, uh, one is forced to annul even if his church doesn't annul. And so the government will have to annul using the same logic that the Catholic Church uses. Now, um, it does not apply to pre-existing grounds for annulment that were known by the consenting spouse before and during the marriage. In other words, kung alam mong addict yan, gambler, womanizer, alcoholic, or even violent, a woman who freely consents to the marriage cannot have her marriage annulled. Because that's, that's an agreement. It's, uh, by acquiescing that pumayag siya. Ang mahirap, hindi rin alam nung nag-consent how much ang kaya niyang itolerate. The, in, the human intellect can only see so far into the future. It cannot see everything. Nor does it know how much its character can take. No? Um, so even if... Uh, and, and uh, many lawyers then have to create a massaged version of the case to make it appear that there was an undetected pre-existing uh, ground for, for uh, annulment up to the exchange of marriage vows. Kaming mga um, nasa coalition, we don't like to give lies. We don't like to tell lies like the lo some of their lawyers ask them to. We want things straight out. Minahal nila yung tao. It is a valid marriage. But then, um, under the rules of annulment, kung matinong tao yan, sa kasalan, tapos naging salot sa'yo, sa pamilya mo, sa lipunan, uh, you cannot have your marriage annulled. Sir Paul, if uh, you could, the chair would appreciate if you could wrap up so that we could ask uh, Rom Dongueto to speak before I need to call Yusek Ilagan before yeah. she leaves. Uh, allow me to wrap up now. Um, our free will is actually limited by our, our intellect. No? So we all have this ability to exercise this free will, to make decisions on a daily basis, to get inside a rabbit hole, and if we cannot handle it, we have to get out of that rabbit hole, right? Now, even priests, 
who get into the rabbit hole are allowed to leave the priesthood. Even Pope Benedict, it is uh, in post-war Vatican, it was tradition that if you became Pope, you're Pope until you die. But Pope Benedict broke tradition. And that's why we have Pope Francis. So there should be a way out of that rabbit hole. Why should we let uh, people suffering still stay in that rabbit hole? The rest of the case. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank you, Sir Paul. Uh, now I'd like to call uh, the executive director of uh, the Philippine Legislators Council for Population and Development, or PLCPD, uh, which advocates for, among other things, children's rights in the Philippines. So on the theme of uh, the effect of dissolution of marriage on the welfare of children, uh, Mr. Romeo Dongueto. Magandang tahari po, Madam Chair. Thank you for this opportunity to present the PLCPD's position on Senate Bill Number 288 and Senate Bill number 356. As an organization of lawmakers who have championed women's rights, children's rights, sexual and reproductive health, gender equality, and social justice in legislation, the Philippine Legislators Committee on Population and Development expresses its full support for the proposals and joins the call of advocates for the immediate approval of these bills. We are resolute in the support for divorce, which not only an important legal issue, but also an issue of women's rights and children's rights, an issue of our time. We would like to highlight the following commendable provisions or features of the proposals, like a contract of marriage. A divorce procedure will provide both parties, as well as their children, legal protection when a couple decides to separate. While this is already possible in the country under annulment and legal separation, the cost and duration is what, of what was discussed earlier by some of the resource person. The cost and duration of an annulment process is prohibitive and affordable to many. A legal separation does not grant the separated parties the legal capacity to contract marriage again. Thus, many former couples choose to simply live apart without legal protection. Similarly, both bills waive filing fees and other costs of litigation for in indigent petitioners, which makes the process more accessible to those who need it. Number two, especially for women who are disproportionately affected by abusive relationships and who may be and who may be economically dependent on their spouse, divorce allow, allows them to get out of these abusive relationships and give them a chance to start anew. In separation between former spouses, a divorce procedure will see through the best interests of children, particularly in terms of child support and custody, especially in cases where any form of abuse is the ground for divorce. Several provisions in both bills provide safeguards to ensure the best interest of children, especially in determining child custody and support. Both versions of the bill also mandate courts to prioritize hearing the petitions of overseas Filipino workers whose situations understandably need more speedy resolution. PLCPD also wishes to appeal to the committee to add the following provisions in the bill. Number one, social protection and assistance for women and men who have undergone divorce, especially for those who, in the course of their marriage, rendered care work and was not formally employed and would need assistance in finding meaningful employment. The stigmatization of divorce, annulment, and separation, and the prohi prohibition of discrimination on the basis of marital status or the marital status of one's parents especially in employment and access to education. Mandate for the government, particularly DSWD, and the Philippine Commission on Women to study the gender differences or disparities in, uh, in the consequences of divorce and develop appropriate programs to help 
party scope with its consequences. And to this, uh, uh, Madam Chair, perhaps we can introduce a behavior change uh, intervention, uh, which should reduce stigma and counter mis uh, misinformation, uh, perhaps through the family development session of the DSWD. Finally, Madam Chair, instituting divorce in the country will strengthen the mandate of the state to protect not only parties who had entered into marriage and their children, but also these very institutions. Magkakawing po ang mga problema ang kinakaharap ng ating mga kabataan at kababaihan na nanatili po ang child early and forced marriage sa maraming komunidad sa ating lipunan. Nandiyan din po ang mataas na antas ng pagbubuntis ng mga kabataan o yung teenage pregnancy. At sa kasalukuyan, ang dami pong challenges na kinakaharap ng ating mga ahensya ng pamalaan, gaps in the implementation of existing laws that protect women and children from abuse uh, uh, within uh, uh, marriages. As accurately pointed out by our Chair Emeritus and Selagman, in his explanatory note for the version of these bills at the House of Representatives, the discourse on divorce around the world is intertwined with the development in the discourse of women's rights. Thus, it is time for the Philippines to finally have an absolute divorce act. Marami po salamat. Marami salamat din, Sir Rom. So now we go back to our government agencies uh, para mahingi po yung mga uh, posisyon ninyo uh, komento tungkol sa kahit alin or lahat ng mga measures na kinoconsider natin ngayon. So from the Department of Social Welfare and Development first, uh, Yusek Luz Ilagan. Uh, thank you and good afternoon, Senator, and uh, all those who are here in this committee hearing. I would like to read the uh, position of the Department of Social Welfare and Development and its position is based on Section 19, Equal Rights on All Matters Relating to Marriage and Family Relations, which is Letter A of Republic Act Number one, 9710, or the Magna Carta of Women. And it provides that, I quote, the state shall take all appropriate measures to eliminate discrimination against women in all matters relating to marriage and family relations and shall ensure the same rights to enter into and leave marriages or common law relationships referred to under the family code without prejudice to personal or religious beliefs." Unquote. So the uh, DSWD believes that the enactment into law of the proposals of the uh, bills in the Senate, other than the existing laws on legal separation, declaration of nullity of marriage, and annulment, will help individuals, especially women, who are suffering from various forms of violence from their spouses. This will enable them to end their dysfunctional marriages and regain dignity, self-esteem, and worth as persons. Further, we would like to emphasize that despite any form of dissolution of marriage, it should be the best interest of the children, of the spouses, that should never be compromised, and particularly the legal status, the custody, and the financial support that the children should have. Uh, this is following the mandate of the DSWD to look after the sectors no, that it serves, so women, the children, and uh, men and women in crisis situations. And so uh, it is not yet detailed. However, we are also considering the commitment that the DSWD has made to the uh, program of the government, which is the Open Government Partnership, that we look into a problem that is alarming, teenage pregnancy, which has consequence also consequences on uh, the relationships of people in the family. So we will be submitting the uh, position paper of uh, the DSWD to the uh, committee. So that is our official position, Madam Chair. 
Thank you, Yusek Luz. Uh, now I'd like to call uh, from the Philippine Statistics Authority, si Mr. Ahmad ba or si Mr. De La Fuente? Kayo po. So Mr. Ryan Anthony Ahmad. Good afternoon, Your Honor, um, Miss uh, Chair. The Philippine Statistics Authority, even before, has always supported the Congress, the Senate, and the House of Representatives in almost all bills um, try to, to be enacted. PSA, uh, in behalf of the PSA, we just need to emphasize on the bill the question of whether it is a retroact it has a retroactive application because we all know as a general rule uh, all laws are prospective in nature and then um, we would also want to include in its provisions whether the effect of dissolving the marriage would equate to the annotation of the pertinent marriage contracts of the concerned parties. Um, and there is this mentioning of, of church um, annulment of marriage, whether this is done on an administrative level. If so, there should it should define that the church order for dissolving marriages by annulment or declaration of nullity of marriage or by dissolution itself is a uh, registrable civil registry document to be registered at the concerned local civil registry office. And lastly, may we request the Honorable Chair to include PSA as one of the members of the TWG creating its IRR. That's all, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Ahmad, at pati sa pag-volunteer ng PSA na sumali dun sa mag-formulate ng IRR kung umabot na tayo sa ganong punto. Thank you very much. Uh, from the Commission on Filipinos Overseas, Mr. De Jaresco po ba ang magsasalita? Yeah, good yes. afternoon. Uh, yes, good afternoon. Senator so, Ontiveros. Yes. Um, and thank you for the opportunity. Yes, sir. The uh, Commission on Filipino Attorney Overseas yes. supports the bill, Senate Bill Number 67, particularly when it removes stringent, expensive requirement to judicially recognize a foreign decree terminating a marriage. And this is provided in the Senate bill which says the Filipino spouse need not seek judicial recognition or enforcement of the foreign decree of termination of marriage. The bill, Madam Senator, inches closer to the vision of removing gender inequality in our society. The bill stands to inject the much needed impetus to, fit, to fulfill the explicit mandate of our constitution which is to ensure the fundamental equality before the law of men and women. The sad truth, uh, Senator, is that Filipino women today suffer inequality still and even discrimination, even in the matter of their involvement in foreign divorce. Records from the Commission from 1989 to 2017 show that a vast majority of marriage migrants are Filipino women. Marriage migrants means who Filipinos who go abroad for purposes of marriage. Out of 542,436 marriage migrants registered with a CFO, 495,000 or 91% are Filipino women. And just to give a bird's eye view, the Commission on Filipinos Overseas records multiple marriage sponsorships by foreign nationals. In other words, there are records in the CFO as to how many foreign nationals have sponsored marriage to a Filipino or Filipina more than once. And the records would show that 22,267 Filipinos became spouses of 10,000 foreign nationals. And of these 22,000 Filipinos 
or subject to multiple uh, marriage sponsorships, 99% are Filipino women. And we have records of to where these countries, uh, these women are subject of uh, multiple marriage sponsorship. When we speak of multiple marriage sponsorships, it consequently entails multiple divorces, especially considering that these countries do not practice polygamy. Records from the Philippine Statistics Office show that only 892 terminated marriages through foreign divorce decree were recognized in judicial proceedings here. So out of the thousands of multiple div divorces abroad, we record only 892 terminated marriages out of resulting from foreign divorce abroad. If there are thousands of Filipino women subject to multiple marriage sponsorship, and only there are only less than 900 recorded terminated marriage marriages recorded in our recognized in our local courts this means thousands of filipino women today are actually single but legally married we see this bill as correcting an inequality among women when it comes to termination of marriages abroad and the attorney uh, i will be telling uh, senator pia that also it would address a new aspect at least sa isip ko na pinalabas nyo ngayon sa hearing of the feminization of migration. Hindi lang pala mas maraming kabaro ko, kabaro namin, kapo babae, nagmamigrate para sa trabaho, para din pala or sa pamamagitan niyang marriage. We appreciate that uh, very much, Madam Chair, that the Senate look into the marriages of women uh, abroad and how they are divorced. Uh, this also is very, uh, is very much linked to human trafficking. But having said that, Madam Chair, allow us to provide some comments on the proposed bill. Number one, on the requirement of authentication by the Philippine Embassy or Consular Office, uh, the bill says that uh, only there, there's a requirement that the Philippine Embassy abroad will uh, authenticate the foreign decree of divorce. The Philippines, through the Department of Foreign Affairs, has recently adhered to or adopted the 1961 Apostille Convention of the Hague. This year, it, uh, they, they started to uh, ad uh, adopt here in the Philippines, and this dispenses consular authentication, save for a few countries like Greece, Austria, Finland, and Germany. The practice of authentication of foreign documents is through the observance of the provisions of the Apostille Convention. So perhaps as a suggestion, Madam Senator, aside from consular authentication, perhaps you can include in the bill and insert there the, the process and recognition of the apostilization of foreign documents. Because this is under the doctrine of in, uh, incorporation under our constitutional law that uh, those conventions and treaties form part of the law of the land. Second, Madam Chair, I, if we may, as a suggestion. Please can proceed. Uh, it's on the phrase in the bill, foreign decree. It's, it says, the bill says, refers to a foreign decree of termination of marriage. Well, the vast majority of nations require a foreign decree or judgment of divorce to effectuate a termination of marriage abroad. There can be a process of divorce which is obtained not by decree, but by mutual consent of the parties. An example is the what they call the Kyogirikon in Japan. Such type, such as those uh, obtaining in Japan, if the bill uses the word decree, it might be misinterpreted to mean that it excludes those divorces that were obtained abroad other than by decree. So the committee may consider that uh, aspect and add a phrase so as to include those which were not, which were obtained other than by a judicial decree abroad. Would you have a proposed uh, formulation, attorney, for this provision? We were talking with the secretary yesterday and raised this uh, a process of termination decree or a process of termination of marriage. Thank you. Just a, just a suggestion, Madam Chair. The, the third and last uh, suggestion, if we may, 
is the provision on the bill on Filipinos who acquired foreign citizenship in line number 9 of page 3 of the bill. This proposal of the bill says, the bill says, the provisions of this act can be availed by a Filipino, and in letter C, it says, who has subsequently acquired foreign citizenship and who has divorced from the Filipino spouse abroad. Perhaps there might be questions pertaining to those who availed of citizen reacquisition, those who Filipinos who, be, who became naturalized abroad and reacquired Philippine citizenship. Under dual citizenship. Yes, Madam Chair. So there may be a need to clarify if these persons can avail of the provisions of the bill also. So thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you also, uh, Attorney uh, De Jaresco, uh, also for the very concrete suggestions for the consideration of the committee. There is one more resource person I haven't called. So if you would like to uh, make a comment on the issues that have been raised so far from Catholics for Reproductive Health, the Executive Director, uh, Ms. Luz Francis Chua. Thank you, Madam Chair, uh, for this opportunity also to share our position. I'm speaking on behalf of our colleague and fellow advocates from the um, in gender rights, which provide legal services to women. Uh, from the Women Health Philippines. And also we take this position as Catholics for Reproductive Health because we believe in uh, equality of all people. So we're saying that a divorce is really women's right. Uh, one of, it was mentioned already that uh, about the harrowing experiences of women who had had failed marriages. One of the leading issues confronting Filipino women in the context of marriage and family life is the absence of divorce law. Women whose husbands are abusing them can only obtain nullity of marriage under 36, Article 36 of the Family Code, where it must be shown that either or both of the parties are psychologically incapacitated. Court decisions nullifying marriages are difficult to obtain, as mentioned already by our colleagues and other resource persons, uh, due to varying judicial interpretations as, as to what constitutes psychological illnesses and lack of appreciation of evidence of physical, emotional, and psychological abuses. With moreover, cases of nullity of marriages, marriage are costly and inaccessible to poor women. Without a specific divorce legislation, Article 36 makes it hard for women in abusive relationships to leave their abusive husbands, thereby allowing the continuance of domestic violence and abusive marriages. As a result of the absence of a divorce law, many women cohabit with their current partners without having their marriage nullified, and some women are dismissed by from government service precisely because of these quote-unquote immoral issues. Such dismissals for immorality do not take into consideration the fact that there are many married women who were previously in abusive relationships and now may have found comfort in their loving, current loving relationship. Divorce will help women break from abusive relationships. Many women suffered physical, verbal, psychological, financial, sexual abuse, and only seek legal recourse after years of enduring their husband's abuse, and after only painfully realizing that their husbands have not changed through their marriage life. As we all know that the national statistics show that one in every four married women experience physical, sexual, and other forms of violence from their husbands. Separated women and women whose marriages were nullified reported the highest incidence of violence from their husbands. Divorce is an important option for abused women to stop the cycle of violence. Marriage is a contractual obligation to love, respect, and support. 
the parties must have recourse to divorce when there is no love, respect, and support in marriage. By not allowing divorce, we are complicit in the prolonging of the abuse of married women since knowledge is difficult to obtain and prohibitive for those who cannot afford it. So we are supporting uh, the divorce uh, primarily because absence of divorce law violates equal protection of the law. Um, court decisions nullifying, nullifying marriages are difficult to obtain because of varying judicial interpretations. Uh, the court, the case, the precedents, uh, there are numerous denials of nullity of cases in courts with such as the 2000 case of Rep versus EOI, where wife battery was not even considered a ground for nullity. This case law is extremely detrimental to women. Clearly, wife battery is a manifestation of failure to provide love and respect. Denying access to women uh, divorce whose act marriages have not been existent from the very start violates women's rights to equal protection of the law. It would be great injustice to women in non-existent and abusive marriages to be compelled by our legal and judicial system to remain married. Another reason is that absence of divorce law violates the constitutional guarantees of separation of church and state and the non-establishment of religion. Philippine state should uphold separation of church and state and non-establishment of religion. We cannot let restrictive religious beliefs that seek to maintain non-existent and abusive marriages interfere with our very basic constitutional guarantees. Religion should not be a barrier for us to pass a divorce law as our laws and governance are based on secular standards not religious standards. Not having a divorce law violates the constitutional guarantees to secularism. As citizens and taxpayers, we should not allow religion to be used as an excuse to deny divorce as Filipinas. And as a regular Catholic woman, I believe myself in the sanctity of marriage as long as it is uh, full in form. However, if it does not if it lacks the necessary requisite, the marriage is broken to begin with. And we should not prevent uh, man or woman or the com partners to seek remedies. We are not breaking families here. What we are trying to provide is uh, some remedies for families who are already broken to begin with. We also support divorce law because of the right to privacy. Constitutionally protected right to co privacy covers related matters to marriage and divorce. The lack of divorce law infringes on a person's basic right to privacy. There are legal precedents that shows that constitutionally protected privacy rights precludes governmental interference in the freedom to make personal decisions relating to divorce and marriage. Four, we also believe that it is a waste of taxpayers' money when the Office of the Solicitor General defends denial of nullity cases before the Supreme Court. The Office of the Solicitor General is wasting hard-earned taxes paid by Filipino citizens when they defend denial of nullity cases before the Supreme Court, whereas the OSG can focus its efforts in filing petitions for certiorari in the countless rape cases dismissed by the trial courts where the rapist goes cut-free causing injustice to rape victim survivors and emboldening rapists to commit further rapes of Filipino women and girls. Ma'am, would you mind uh, wrapping up uh, and also submitting your full statement 
uh, to the committee. Also, a note po to the DOJ, if you could include uh, in your position paper your reflection dun sa issue na nini-raise ngayon on the role uh, of the Solgen uh, in, in these bills. Yes, Thank Madam you. Chair, I'm already wrapping up. We believe that, uh, again, an another reason for having the divorce law is that uh, it is consistent with the state obligation to the CEDAW. So, uh, in conclusion, uh, with the having ratified the CEDAW Convention, it is the obligation of the Philippines to expedite the enactment of the divorce law. Legislators must uphold international human rights standards and immediately pass a divorce law. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you very much also. Uh, so, in closing, uh, mga kasama, uh, Pinakinga natin ang isa't isa. We listen to contrary points and ideas. But what is clear is this around the table. Nobody wants divorce. It's painful. It's heartbreaking. It signals the end of love. But for those who need it, it should be there. We believe in second chances. And that is ultimately what this committee seeks. So on behalf also of Senator Spia, uh, an author, and uh, Doroy De La Rosa, my colleague earlier, uh, sa bawat isa po sa inyo, maraming salamat for accompanying us uh, on this journey. This hearing is now adjourned.